It's time for the late night boxing talks. This is going to be a more cordial boxing talks, less chaotic one. We're not going to argue redundancies tonight. The beard is still growing in nicely. See the five o'clock shadow. It's at five o'clock now. Will, what it do? And yeah, you know, it's a lot of different stuff going on. I seen a uh, interview they did with Michaela Mayer. Probably going to do a segment on it later on in a few days because there's a proliferation of stories I want to talk about. And she's trying to say that Eddie Hearn cannot afford to finance the rematch between her and Alicia, which I thought that's just silliness. Like now you just now you just saying whatever, because reality is, you know, she was going to box on the undercard of Taylor versus Catterall which is not a top rank show. It's a boxer show, you know, that that's a boxer show. You have an American fighter versus a Greek Dominican boxing in Scotland. If, if the fight would have came off, if Josh wouldn't have got injured, that's what would have happened. And I'm just thinking to myself, that is very odd placement for a fight like that. And I very much like that fight. I think it's a great fight, but that kind of shows where you at that, your next fight was not a top rank show. Not really. Just because top rank picks up the U.S. rights to the fight, that don't make it a top rank fight. That was a boxer show. That was a boxer fight. And you're trying to imply that Eddie Hearn don't have the money to pay you. What's he supposed to pay you? You lost. You ain't got no belt. You know what I mean? I'm going to have to um, hit up what you gonna call it and try to get some curse words and some spicy talk out here about all of that because it seems like you know, you know, it's a lot of things to say. What it do, Jay Flint? What it do, Michael? What it do, country? Antonio, Jack, old dirty. And yeah, yo, like, it's just, it's kind of silly. Mario, what it do? They don't, yeah, yeah, I kind of figured, bro. I'm like, yo, what you mean Eddie don't got the money to pay you? Look, I'm not proposing that they pay Michaela Mayer peanuts. I'm not proposing that. The rematch is a great fight. I like the fight. I think it's a great fight. I right, was Goody Sean. Was Goody Reyes? I vote Lisa in the building. I'm not proposing that they pay Michaela Mayer peanuts on a dollar. There's interest in the fight. It is a very good fight. And for what it's worth, I think Michaela is a very good boxer. Many of you already know that. I've been following the kid's career since she went pro. So she's a good fighter. But the idea that you're somehow in a position of power when you lost, like you lost, fam. And because you're the one who's always harping about the rematch, that's likely why Alicia said, okay, send an offer. If you want me to take time out of my day to give you another fight, you need to pay me something. Make it worth my while because you ain't got nothing that I need. You know what I mean? So ya tú sabes, Mario, tú sabes cómo las cosas son. Y yo voy a ver si yo puedo tener otra entrevista con Alicia. Yo voy a ver si yo puedo tener otra to see what she thinks about all that shit. Ya yo sé, yo me imagino lo que ella va a decir, ¿me entiende? Pero the fans get a kick out of it. The fans love it. So vamos a ver lo que es. Pero once again, you know, I'm not advocating that. I'm not advocating that they pay Michaela Peanuts on the dollar. But there's a reason that she's telling you, all right, you want a rematch so damn bad. What do you have for me? What money you have for me? I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Like, if you're going to go on behind the gloves and fight hype and fight hub, and every time they point a camera at you, you talking about the rematch. Hey, dog. Hey, what you got? What you got? Because I'm out here getting these belts, and I'm targeting these big fish. If you want me to take time out my day, hey, what you got for me? You know what I mean? It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Giancarlo, que lo que es, manin. Yeah, man, I can't wait for my beard to grow back. I don't like looking young. I feel like I look young now. I don't like looking young. I like looking old, like a sage, like Gandalf. I don't feel I look like a sage. I look like some young whippersnapper, and I'm not a young whippersnapper. I'm old. You know what I mean? I got into a couple of discussions, and, and I, I, I kept them short. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on them about the zone schedule and how obtuse a lot of people tr pretend to be, essentially. And I firmly believe that these are paid interns and people from Queensbury that have alt accounts on Twitter because they tried to downplay the zone schedule as if Frank has this whole 
thing of fights. I'm like, bro, what the fuck fights does Frank Warren have? What fights does he have? Like, let me know. The only fight that he's doing that I'm looking forward to that is on schedule is Joyce versus Zhang. Fury versus Usyk is not done yet. So all I really give you is two fights. The match room's eight, and that's not even counting Canelo's next fight. That's all you got is two fights. Isaiah, what it do? Eso lo que yo estoy diciendo, manin. You know, I, I, I get into a lot of discussions about Baumgartner versus Mayer because, and I know that these are Mayer fans. I know that they're Mayer fans that they try to hide that they're Mayer fans because if they know, if people know they're Mayer fans, they're just going to know it's a case of sour grapes. And a lot of those guys, they show up in my comments and they try to say A, B, C, and D. And I'm like, bro, ain't no way you're going to rationalize this to where Alicia owes her a second fight or she owes her a rematch. That shit don't make no sense. If Michaela would have won, you know what she would have did. It's just reality. So when you constantly whine about it, it's like, bro, what the fuck? Like, stop whining about that shit. She ain't even saying that she won't fight her again, but maybe it ain't next. Maybe she gonna fight somebody else. You never know. To the winner, go to spoils. To the loser, go do interviews. Go do more interviews. You know what I mean? Jules, how you know Eddie's the man? They always hate. Notice how no one is talking about Usyk versus Fury as they did with AJ and Fury, and they were in talks. Exactly, bro. And I like Usyk versus Fury, by the way. I like Usyk versus Fury. I love that fight. But I'm just saying that I'm a boxing fan. What do you have on the schedule aside from two fights? One of them is not even on the schedule. The only one that's on the schedule is Joyce versus Zhang, which I did say it is a good fight. But Matchroom just showed eight fights. They showed eight fights on the schedule. And that's not even a whole schedule. That don't count Canelo's next fight. I'm saying it's eight fights. Wood versus Lara is a great fight. Cordina versus Rakimov is a great fight. Taylor versus Serrano is a great fight. I like Joshua versus Franklin personally. If you don't, that's your prerogative. I like that fight. If you trying to tell me that you was hyped to pay 26 pounds, which is $32 American, if you telling me that you was hyped off of that bullshit, on top of what you already paying for a BT subscription, you had to pay an additional $32, which is 26 pounds. If you're trying to convince me that that was value for money, but this isn't, get Frank Dick out of your mouth. Get Frank's dick out of your mouth. Because you, you sound stupid, fam. Like, for real, though, you sound stupid. Shout out to my man, Will. Nobody ever taught her how to lose with grace. Yeah, yo, I mean, it's it's a rivalry with them. Personally, I think it's a beautiful thing that they have each other because that's what creates great fights in boxing when it's not just business as usual, when the two people actually don't like each other, like Morales and Barrera or Mayweather and Pacquiao or um, Oscar De La Hoya and Ricardo Mayorga. It just makes the fight that much better when you know that there are bad intentions in there, that it's not just a boxing match. It's not just business as usual. They want to fuck each other up. I think that they're both very fortunate. I've said that before. I think that applies to a lot of fighters, um, that they have a rival. I think that's it's actually good. And I think that in today's boxing landscape, it really doesn't get used enough that, you know, like, for example, Clarissa Shields and Raquel Miller don't like each other. They, they not cool at all. Like, it ain't just some oh, you got a belt and I want to fight for a belt. It's on some real, yo, I really don't fucking like you type shit. And and that they need to do something with that because ain't nobody getting no younger out here. You know what I mean? And, and it's good that Michaela and Alicia have each other. Frick to your frack. You know, you got that person to bounce shit off of because that keeps the momentum going even after the fight. The fact that the fight is still a talking point even after the outcome, that's a blessing. That's actually a blessing that this shit is not about a belt. This shit is not about, oh, I want to be a champion over here and all of that. It's some real personal shit. Like, yeah, I really don't fuck with you and I really don't like you and I really want to punch you in the face. That's a beautiful thing, dog. That's a really beautiful thing, especially in this sport. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about the Ryan Garcia and Javante Davis shit. 
And it's just like, I don't know how much more can be said. I appreciate that, Lisa. Appreciate the super sticker. I don't know how much else can be said about all of that, to be honest. I feel like I've said all that I can say. And there's just not a lot of new ground to cover when it comes to that, that you want that level of control. It's just, it's like, bro, like, how are you supposed to negotiate terms when that's how you negotiate? No wonder that so many super fights don't happen on your watch. Look at how you negotiate. He supposed to be some kind of wizard, but all I see the last five, six, seven years is a bunch of fights that didn't happen because of how y'all do shit. Feel me? So it is what it is, B. You know, I'm still waiting for my Devin versus Lomachenko. You know what I mean? I need that. About to open up the chat to the panel. And yeah, yo, it's just, it's crazy, yo. It's crazy. I don't like not having my beard real rap. I look young and shit. I look like I'm fucking, I don't know. How old I look? Y'all tell me in the comments. I look young, B. If Mayor was gracious, a B look her way, but she became salty and it's up in the air now. Yeah, but you know what the beauty about that is, Isaiah? That we get to see the personalities of the fighters. And people, the audience, the audience appreciates that shit. Like, as much as salty as Michaela's being, it's good for her career. It's good for AB's career that they have each other. It's actually good for them. What's goody, Jules? Ain't shit, man. We out here. Yeah, I look 34. See, that's good because I'm not even 34. What's up, Oh, fellas? shit. One foot out the door says I look between 25 and 30. Yeah, Ray you says young, I look. Reyes says I look 35. Oh, Dirty says I look 34. Actually, 30, yeah. Between 32 and 35. Yeah, Yo, I look, look like Jules. You look like Mike McCallum when he shaved the mustache. If that makes you feel any better, <laughs> Yo, Mike McCallum hit hard, bro. Mm. So Reyes, I saw Reyes. I actually saw that you wanted to get in on yesterday's conversation, and there was one aspect of it that you wanted to talk about in particular, as far as who is the pressure on to do this uh, Davis versus um, Garcia fight. So go ahead, the floor is yours. And what did you want to add to that conversation? Okay, so I'm not saying there's no pressure on David or that he has more than um or Ryan has more than him, but I feel like to pretend that Ryan has no pressure is insane. Like after all this shit he's been saying, for you not to have this fight happen is incredible because you did not turn down just one title shot. You threw away another in three seconds. You calmly said, Bro, beating Davis is better than beating Regis in my eyes, and I do not believe that for three seconds. And anybody who's a hardcore boxing fan doesn't believe that for a second either. So just to hear the disdain that you had for that fight immediately, and you just go out and say, well, gosh, I, it seems like I can't fight Davis either, guys. What what are you going to do? I got to fight Macedo Gesta now. <laughs> like that just, that you know how much, like, I, I hear that. I'm like, ah, oh, bro, ugh, disgusting. And you can't go out and fight Regis after that because, well, he'll murder you, especially without a tune-up. That's true. I, I will say this, though. If he does leave and immediately fights Tio, problem solved. But but even then, it's like, I don't know if you would get him on that schedule. I, I don't think Tio is that dumb to the point where he thinks he can take you, you know, looking this bad. And if he goes, I heard that, Um, I don't know if this is true. I just saw it on like a thumbnail for Punch Drunk. And they said that they were negotiating for the Josh Taylor fight. Yeah, but I don't believe that, bro. Yeah, I don't so, believe that because Josh I, Taylor, Josh Taylor has a torn plantar fascia. You know what I mean? Like, like he 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 called off the Catterall fight due to an injury, so he could enter negotiations for Teofimo. Come on now. Let me go to Steve. Steve, I got a question for you, Steve. Everybody, Steve Kim has joined us. Everybody, applaud for Steve Kim. <laughs> How you doing? Hey, what's up, Steve? How you doing, man? All right, now, Steve, I have questions that need your answers. Steve, who do you feel, if you do feel that there's pressure on any one particular side to get this fight done, do you feel that there's more pressure on Gervonta to get this fight done, or is there more pressure on Ryan to get this fight done? Uh, whew, that's a tough one, because I, I don't think it's just either or. I think both of them really kind of got out there. I mean, I thought it was really strange. Jules, that about what six seven weeks ago they came out and made this joint announcement and it was almost like deja vu all over again that 
the deal is done. Just got to work out a few minor details. And we're going to have a pay. Uh, we've seen that before, right? With Spence Crawford. Yes, we did, thing, huh? That's really interesting. I've got some information on this. This fight, you have to remember, they started discussing this fight back last summer. Okay. There, there was actually some talk of having this fight later this year. Then eventually it was going to be January 7th. What I was told was suddenly out of nowhere, Heyman and that side said, no, no, we're going to back it up. We're doing a tune-up, which ended up being Hector Luis Garcia. So around that point, everyone knew the fight was going to be April. What I was told was for some reason, and this is from the Heyman playbook, everyone that I've ever talked to that has dealt with Al Heyman in a negotiation, the one thing that always happens is he takes his sweet time because not only is he meticulous with the contracts line by line, but he also plays something very tactical where he tries to squeeze you out of time. So by the time you get the contracts back, you're on the spot to almost accept it right away. And I don't think Ryan does himself or Golden Boy any favors when he makes proclamations saying, I want one fight and one fight only. Because now you take away your leverage. So the interesting thing is Golden Boy's position is very clear. We've given into everything. They gave into the split. They gave into the original network. Uh, they gave into the date. They, they they let the fight go into April, and they're saying they absolutely cannot allow the zone not to be involved in the rematch should they win. Now let, let me just tell you something, guys. There's a historical uh, precedence for a fight of this magnitude to be flipped networks. Fury Wilder two and three. So when all these geniuses on social media say what's never been done before, um, they either have selective memory or they're just lying or they're ignorant. The other thing is. Right. Golden Boy has a position that is very strong in my view. They believe that they've given up every concession from the money to the platform to the venue, all that stuff. Uh, well, we need to compromise here. All Golden Boy is saying is should the rematch clause be invoked, it is our network that has invested millions of dollars into this young man and with our company. They need to have a piece of the pie. This brings me back to the early 90s, <clears throat> and I talked to someone that was involved back then. Pernell Whitaker was an HBO staple for an early career, as was main events. They were the main content providers, or one of them, alongside Top mm -hmm. Rank. Mm -hmm. And they had a choice to make because Pernell's contract with HBO ran out, and there was a window to make the Chavez fight. And Shelly Finkel had promised HBO and Ross Greenberg, not Ross Greenberg, Seth Abraham, and Bob Greenway that hey we're we're not we're loyal we're not going to do anything. The problem was the biggest money fight was on the other side of the street at Showtime with Julio Cesar Chavez, and HBO executives near literally read that the fight was was announced as they read the morning paper, and it, I mean it was a it was an unbelievable situation. One of the executives, Bob Greenway. He wanted to beat up Shelly Finkel before that press conference. I think I told that story where Shelly Finkel gets into a karate stance. He goes, Bob, you back off. I know. I know. Can you imagine Shelly, though? For those of you that know what Shelly – can you imagine? Could you imagine him in, like, a crane position like Daniel LaRusso? So, anyway, Bob Greenway says, ah, oh, Jesus. Okay, I'm out. I'm like, I'm going to embarrass myself. I don't want to beat up this poor schmuck. Hey, See, but, here, but here's what happened. Main events oh, became sorry. persona non grata with HBO for about a year or so. Mm. And it hurt their overall business. Kathy Duba has told me that. So this See, whole notion that Golden Boy should just let it happen. You know what? I'm sick of these PVC pom-pom waivers. And the immortal words of Coach Malachi Williams, if you didn't have a double standard, you wouldn't have any at all. Right. You, that, you know that you that's that's what I was going to allude to because I, I watched uh, some clips from Nestor Gibbs. Shout out to Nestor Gibbs of the Boxing Voice, and he seems to be of the opinion that Ryan should just take the deal as it is. And I, I disagree. I, I I do. I disagree mm -hmm. because from where I'm sitting, Ryan is actually in a position of power. Ryan has alternatives that perhaps Javante doesn't have. And I feel like Showtime needs this fight more than DAZN does. And yes. if they're willing to come over and they're willing to do all these things, they're conceding the 136, they're doing it on your platform, you have all the advantages, you're the house fighter, you need the, you know, a little bit of wiggle room, you know, be flexible. Do you agree with that? Do you feel yes. that the, the rematch should go to Golden Boy if, if Ryan wins? 
they believe that they have given in to every single concession because the interesting thing is, and this is a dynamic that has worked against Golden Boy. Ryan Garcia and his team uh, with attorney Lupe Valencia, they haven't been the greatest team players on behalf of Golden Boy. Now, that does not help the situation, okay? Now, here's the thing that gets me, Jules, and you've talked about it. I saw your video earlier, and I sent it off to various people within the industry. Um, and with the note, start at six minutes. But anyway, when did Tank Davis become this million-buy pay-per-view franchise? When, when did he become this Oscar De La Hoya 2.0? When did he become Canelo Alvarez? I, I don't... I, I mean, this it, is it's smoke and mirrors, about Steve. This. Steve, it's smoke and mirrors. Like we, we, like we know. Like, bro, look, you're not gonna, you're not gonna turn him into what Canelo is, or what Floyd was, or what Oscar was, because you don't have big fights. You're trying to convince people that Leo Santa Cruz was a big fight, or Roly Romero was a big fight. None Mario, of you. Mario. You've been on pay-per-view five times over the course of maybe three going on four years, I want to say, maybe three years. And your audience isn't growing, okay? Like, it's it's plateaued. If anything, it's declined, all right? Let's, let's be honest. And I knew that Hector Garcia fight, there's no way that sold 200,000 pay-per-view buys. There's no way. 200,000 people did not want to see that fight. That's bullshit, all right? And it's going to stay that way, which is why I feel... There's actually more pressure on Gervonta to do this fight because your fights cost $80 at a time, bro. His don't. Mm -hmm. You know, we see his fights as part of a zone subscription. You're the one trying to convince the audience that your fight is so great they should have to pay on top right. of their cable bill or on top of their Showtime subscription to see it. Who the fuck are you fighting, bro? Who are these people? Yeah. Uh, I, I got Jules. a question for Steve real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Steve. Okay, Jules brought up a great point yesterday because due to Ryan having to leverage that, PBC needs this fight and Ryan and Golden Boy more than they need him so that they could easily walk away if they needed to. Um, plus, PBC is pretty much going towards, you know, heading towards bankruptcy uh, from what I, what we all been hearing. Would you agree with that? And I mean, I agree with it, but would you agree with that? And what, what's your take on that? You know, I don't know if they're headed for bankruptcy. I, I mean, again, we've been kind of forecasting this for a while. Um, you know, Al Heyman is very resourceful. I will give him that. Um, but do I believe that PBC truly needs this event just for in terms of optics? And, and optics is the very reason why they even announced the fight. I, I was of the theory that when they announced this fight about two months ago with much hoopla, without an actual finalized deal. Because someone at mm. Golden Boy told me on that particular day when everyone was celebrating and, uh, you know, uh, filleting themselves, he said to me very clearly in a tweet or in a text, he said, the devil's in the details. It is not finalized. And they've been very consistent in saying that. Um, the issue that I think is is funny is that it, it's interesting that Steven Espinosa is so out front about this, going into a safe spaces and saying whatever he wants to. Hmm. Um, when did he become the promoter? Isn't he the network? Yeah, I, I, I don't thank get God. this. <laughs> what it, fellas want to thank God for you, Steve, because I, I, I thought I was the only one that noticed that, like, look, when PBC had the deal with Fox, Bill Wenger was not that involved. And, and Top Rank has been at ESPN for years now, but I don't see ESPN executives in Twitter spaces, you know, running spin or running interference. Only Stefan does this. And honestly, I feel it heralds the end. I yeah, feel it, it, it does heralds feel the end. a little bit uh, desperate, but I, I just, you know, the, the feeling is from Golden Boy, in my view, is if they let this kid trample over him and just get what he wants by throwing a tantrum, which he'd done before, then they say, well, every time we build a fighter, they could pull this on us. Yep. And the other thing is, yeah, does Ryan have more leverage than he even thinks? Yes. The problem is, I wonder if that is being conveyed to him by his team. Okay? I'll just leave it at that. I don't know if he's getting all the right information or he's being fed certain things. But that has been a very, very rocky relationship. Let's go back three, four years. Ryan and Golden Boy, that honeymoon turned sour. And yes, then he did. didn't want to fight that one date in September. And then I remember literally before the Kovalev Canelo press conference out here in L.A. at the train station, 
they made a big show on social media where Ryan Garcia was at Delahoya's office signing the biggest contract ever for a prospect in the history of boxing. I remember and that. And they're hugging it out. And I told someone at Golden Boy, I said, that's a 10 fight deal, huh? They're like, yeah. And I said, by the fourth fight, he'll be bitching and moaning. What's funny is, is, and what's funny is, someone at Gold, that same person said, Steve, you were wrong. It only took three fights. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> but I also want to say this. Um, in spite of that, you know, I think that Ryan's value in the fight is being understated in the sense that Ryan has major endorsements. Ryan has major sponsorships. Javante doesn't. You know, like seriously, the young eyes and the young ears, who's really bringing that yeah, to the he table? He makes it mainstream. There's no, look, I I will say this about Tank. They've done a great job of developing him into a real ticket buying attraction. He creates some buzz. There are very few fighters in America that can go to three different markets on both coasts and in the middle and actually sell it out legitimately or have real ticket selling uh, appeal. But in terms of this pay-per-view, there's a reason why they do not announce those numbers. In fact, they don't even leak the numbers out to various reporters anymore. And it's to a point where boxing scene has the unknown writer writing these reports. Steve. Um, you know, there used Steve. to be a time, guys, when I first got into this business, um, you know, that they used to literally you send you a fax machine. That's how long I've been around. HBO Sports used to send you a fax machine with the numbers the gross, and where it ranked all time. They don't even do that anymore because the pay-per-view market is very, very depressed. Well, let's say this, Steve. We know what the rule of thumb is. If you had something to brag about, you'd you be would. bragging about it. Right. And, 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 and that's where it's at. Like, like, And I think that this got lost on a lot of people, but I, I often bring it up because people need to understand that DAZN did a, an official press release for the Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin trilogy. And while the aesthetic of the match was a dud, the sales were not. If they're telling you that this thing did a million, believe it. Because you can't lie on a press release, you know. They're making it public. They're telling you themselves, this thing did a million buys. Why do I believe them? Well, he sold 800000 with Caleb Plant. Of course he could sell a little more than that with a more well-known fighter. And people didn't want to believe that. And I'm like, well, I, I don't know what to tell you, bro, but you can't really lie on a press release. And who else do you see doing press releases? Showtime doesn't. Every number we hear by way of Showtime is a rumor, a ballpark, an estimation. Uh, can, can I interject here? Um, it, it seems to me that recently it feels like BoxingScene.com, which is a subsidiary of Paramount Global, is reporting these numbers but no one is putting their name on it. Granted, you know, the zone did it too, but they're officially announced. But what is why is Boxer Scene doing that? And by the way, I got blocked by them, just to point that out. Uh, well, I think it's because they are a subsidiary of CBS, are they not? Yes. Wow, Paramount there Global. You <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's it's interference. You know what I actually believe, Steve? There's probably a journalist there that's getting a little bit money a little bit of money on the side. Not much, I imagine to uh, just, you know, print those kinds of stories. They don't attach their name to it because, obviously, plausible deniability. How do you know I wrote that article? It was boxing scene staff. That could have been anyone. That's what right. I think is going on. Because it doesn't make sense that, okay, I'm going to publish a story and I'm not going to put my name on it. Then why the fuck did you publish it? Yeah. By the way, guys, right now, today is what? February 7th, which means... By this time next week, it'll be two months for the proposed date of April 15th. Now, I, I already have told somebody, I think it's already too late to do a press conference or some sort of media tour and all that, all, all the other bells and whistles that you need nowadays. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're really cutting it thin here. Have they even, I mean, like, like okay, they basically have two months al dente. They have two months Al dente. When should they start camp, Steve? Or should they already be in camp for each Well, time? I know. Look, I think that, look, I don't know what Ryan's doing. I know, uh, excuse me. I don't know what Tank is doing. I do know Ryan spent a week or so in Miami. They wanted to get to a warmer environment. Uh, but they came back because the sparring was just not up to snuff. So they've already come back to the 10 goose. 
I, I spoke to Joe Goosen a couple of days ago and he said, Steve, that week was pretty good because the weather was really nice, but the boxing culture, let's just put it this way. It's not like the days of Chris and Angelo Dundee in the fifth street gym, but you know, <laughs> again, they got something out of it. Um, you know, Ryan did not want to run in the cold weather and it has been cold here by our standards in LA. So I think they're back down Southern California. Um, they should already, already be in the gym now. Uh, but keep this in mind, guys. I think sometime next week, and I, I'm not making any legal predictions. I'm not F. Lee Bailey here, okay? But Tank Davis does have his legal case. Yep. Steve, how do you feel about that? What do your instincts tell you? Well, I know what I've been told is that the judge has made it clear. There will be no financial settlement. This is not a civil suit, but a legal one. But, you know, look. Justice is very skewed for those with power and money and influence and money talks. So nothing would surprise me. I mean, do I think it would be as galling or as upfront as Floyd Mayweather getting a suspended sentence so he could at least fight somebody? I think it was Miguel Cotto or whoever that was back then. And then he could move on with his life. I'm not sure (laughs) about that, but I've come to really be cynical about this whole thing. I mean, look, Tank Davis's baby mom, mom actually went from from calling 911 saying her life is being threatened to then apologizing for starting the whole thing 36 hours later. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. That, that looks weird. By know? the way, statistically, 80 percent of uh, domestic abuse victims recant their story. Right. Especially right. when when you're putting your ATM in jail. Possibly. Yes, and and and, yep. and I'm gonna I'm gonna be cynical. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be cavalier. I'm gonna be brash. I'm gonna be honest. That's exactly how I look at it. You put that guy in jail. What's your revenue stream? Right. If he's not fighting, you're not making money either. Right. And so that's the whole thing. And you know, we'll see what happens. But I do believe Golden Boy has had it. And you know, they have to make a stand because you can't let the tail wag the dog. Um, there comes a point in time where Ryan has to understand they have other businesses too. But I, you know, look, Ryan, I thought it was very strange that Ryan decided not to go on with the January 28th um, event. And I think his minimum is right around two to two and a half million. No, Steve, you didn't hear Ryan Garcia did an interview. Uh, I I did a, I did a, I did a, um, a, a segment on it. And he said that he was told by Al Heyman, if he moves forward with the Hesta fight, the fight with Javante is off. Right. And you know what's funny? And I told this to somebody. Why is a guy like Ryan Garcia, with his clout, whatever that is, allowing anyone else to dictate your path? You see the way he's getting played here? You, you yes. see the way he's being manipulated? Yeah, but Al, Al and them tried to do the same thing to Bud, remember? Right. Mm-hmm. And Bud, I'll say this to you. By the way, guys, I sent you that tweet from that guy who was trying to, like, saying, oh, that guy, the, the, the whole – mental gymnastics of these PVC pom-pom waivers is really funny. Yeah. Um, that they're actually now trying to say that Bud backed out of the fight and, and the guy was actually insulted. I didn't answer him and I'm like, how can you argue this stuff? But you can't, you can't bro. And I, I don't anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. bother with it. But I, I, I just, what the thing with Ryan that gets me is one last, he has not fought since July. Exactly. I'd give me a break. Exactly. I, I exactly. have a question. I just have a quick question. Do you guys believe, obviously, how things went down six, eight months um, with the Spence Crawford situation? You know, you can make the argument that some people are going to put fault on Bud. Some people, like myself, are going to put fault on the PBC, Al Heyman. If this happens again and we don't get this fight mm. with a guy who came out in Garcia since he wants to fight, he's doing everything. At what point in time does the PBC or does Al Heyman get a reputation of being difficult and maybe he already it has it, villain? He already has what it. What I'm saying, no, what I'm mean, saying is, what, when, is, when do the true believers start saying, okay, maybe accountable. there is? Look, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, and, and you know that this isn't that kind of channel, that I don't I don't look to muster up metrics by by being a provocateur. But, I, but if we're going to address your question, the main reason that the Hamanites, that a lot of these guys, that they, they behave the way that they do when Al Haman is the subject, is because they vicariously live through him. Because, you know, the color of the skin, that that's what it is, you know. And they feel that it's an indictment. Well, no, no. They feel it's an insult or an attack on them when you question his ability to do business. When for us, look, it's not about that. It's about the fights. It's not about A, B, C, and D. 
It's about the fights. And there is a distinct pattern here, all right? Wilder rejected the DAZN offer because Al Heyman told him to, okay? There was no Bob Arum in those negotiations last year with Crawford, and that fell apart. And now we see this. This is about to fall apart, okay? What is the common denominator? Because that was Golden Boy, Matchroom, no top rank. You didn't want to do it when top rank was involved. All right, fine. No top rank. You still didn't get it done. Jules, let's go all the way back to 2013. HBO spent a better part of a year, year and a half, trying to make a fight between Adonis Stevenson and Sergey Kovalev. Mm. And then what happened? Adonis Nothing. Stevenson got pulled out of that fight as he signed with Al Heyman. It was at that point Kathy Duva dubbed him the great obstructionist. Listen, Rock Nation won the purse bid for Karabov versus Quillen. Mm. What does Quillen do? He drops his WBO title. Paid to drop it and everything. It's like, come, like, like this is not, this is not tribalism. Like, look, I'm just here for the boxing, bro. I'm not here for the politics. I'm not here for the race right. war. I'm not here for none of that. I'm here for the boxing, and I'm just telling you, Al Heyman's been doing this for years. The contracts for Leo Santa Cruz versus Guillermo Rigondeau that was supposed to go down. Why didn't it go down? Forget Oscar. Don't believe Oscar. Leo said it. Al Heyman took him out of that. Yep. Said nobody care about that fight. He said that, not me, not me. And forget Oscar. Leo said that. Yep. The guys who felt so bad that Rigo had to go up to 130 for a fight. Well, that's why. Al kept that guy away from him. And I think he kept Carl Frampton away from him. Because I, I think Carl Frampton was with them in those years. And he didn't want to fight Rigo. It's like you know they're never going to accountable. Jules, you know what's amazing if you put it into perspective about double standards and no standards? Let's say Canelo Bivol, um, or let's go with let's go with Canelo Golovkin three. You know, because there's that big debate over our, out of that nine hundred thousand, how many were domestic and how many were foreign. All right, let's take worst case scenario, only four hundred fifty to five hundred thousand pay per view buys for that particular fight. And I'm just hypothesizing here were U.S. buys. 500,000 buys literally might be the grand total of all of Tank's pay-per-views combined. Yep. Just mm, think uh, yeah. about that. Literally. It's, no, it's funny you said that because I got a comment just like that under the video that, that I uploaded about it. That like, Tank, like I'd be lying to you if I said the kid don't have potential or that he can't be in a big fight. He, he can, but he hasn't been in one yet. All this superstar talk, that's smoke and mirrors, bro. It is. The, the hope is that the pay-per-view will sell well enough that everybody makes a fuck ton of money. The gate can only get you so much because there are only so many seats to fill. The hope is that the pay-per-view does well in excess of, of whatever. And he's not doing that. If anything, his buys have declined over time. They're not on the up and up. They're in decline because nobody wants to pay, especially in this economy. $80 to see you fight Hector Garcia? Right. Yeah, and, and guys, it's amazing. Here's what's going to happen if this thing does blow up. And again, I haven't given up hope yet because a lot of things can be revived. Is that There's going to be a segment of fans that say, well, Golden Boy was intractable and they were the ones being stubborn. While I'll say, well, wait a minute. They made every concession to make the first fight. How come if their guy wins, and theoretically, I, I, would, I would hypothesize that – Ryan Garcia might be the biggest name in boxing below the heavyweight division, not named Canelo, if he beats Tank. Why shouldn't uh, the zone have a piece of the pie for the rematch? Right. What they are asking for, again, I'll point this out, is not unprecedented. It's been done recently. Mm -hmm. um, and a, a compromise in boxing should not just be whatever Al Heyman or whatever promotional company wants. That's well, not the way it well, works. Al Heyman doesn't want to give up control. That's why it's all about control mm -hmm. with him. Well, also, he needs the money. Let's be honest. I, I, I firmly believe, Steve, uh, Marcos Villegas tweeted a couple of months ago that Fox stopped footing the bill for production costs for all the shows that were happening on Fox. And all of those shows were PBC. And I asked myself, if Fox isn't giving them the money, where are they getting the money from to pay for those shows? Marcos Villegas' tweet said that they were basically paying for the shows themselves. And I think, you know who's paying for those shows? Lloyd. That's why he's doing all these mm. exhibitions. It makes sense. Well, that's why he'd be doing the exhibitions, because why else? That and his legal troubles, why else would he be doing it?
who else has that kind of money to, 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 to bankroll those shows if Fox is not giving you a budget anymore? Where would the money have come from? I know you weren't using a Showtime budget to pay for shows on Fox. That's stupid. Well, Where did that money come from? Not only that, but remember what he said. If you work for me, Al Heyman, you work for me. And if you work for me, you work for Al Heyman. So, I mean, you know, that tells the story right there. Let, let me read Let me read the Super Chats. Realistically, Steve, can the PBC survive without Garcia versus Davis? Just from everything you know offhand, can it? Yeah, look, I don't. Look, they're surviving now. They they are actually having shows, and um, you know I'm sure you guys are all looking forward to seeing Ray Vargas this Saturday night, right? But anyway, Wait, <laughs> God, I didn't even know. I, I, I was about to serious. do something. I didn't know, bro. And by the way, they are giving away tickets for that. Um, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know that for a fact. I got some proof on it. I mean, it's funny, guys. For my next uh, Canines Corner on Snack.com. Uh, I literally said, I, I, I'm not going to write a column previewing this. I actually did a, a tribute column to Oscar De La Hoya, uh, a belated 50th birthday wish. And you know, like I look back as someone that covered most of his career, guys, from ringside and got to know him. And I was actually a critic of this back in the late 90s. Um, how much better boxing was with guys like De La Hoya? Think about this, guys. He fought Shane Mosley and helped take him to another stratosphere. He launched Floyd Mayweather as money, and he turned Manny Pacquiao into an international superstar. Yep. I mean, just think about the stuff that he did. Um, he fought five times in one year as a world champion in 1997. Then in 99, he fought Ike Corte, Ovacar, and Felix Trinidad in consecutive fights in an eight-month stretch. They don't make fighters like that no more. Steve. No, um, and and we sh and look, I I actually just started. I started looking at his box rec, and I'm like, wow, we did not appreciate him. I know that he becomes a little bit of a punching bag because of some of the stuff that he does, his personal problems and his foibles. But you know what? I'm actually happy that he's having fun now. Uh, I'm enjoying the run that I he's am. on. I I love it, and 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 I've I've maintained this for at least one calendar year. I want the zone. To give him more money. Yes. Golden Boy knows how to do fun shows. We could say what we want, but every Golden Boy show I've seen, they have been fun. They they have been fun, you know. It's it's not the best matchmaking, but their resources are limited. And I firmly believe they are the key to America. Like Eddie, believe it or not, I like his matchroom shows. I like I like those shows. But if you really want to tap into the American market, give Oscar more money. Give him more money. Give yeah. him more dates. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. You know, people have to understand when 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 the zone was started, and then with the creation of Matchroom Boxing USA, um, the zone is actually like a forty nine or fifty percent equity partner. So they have a vested interest. I don't even know if it exists anymore. What they're doing, I know a lot of people that I know from the zone have been laid off, but they've always favored Eddie. Especially when Eddie brought that supposed one billion dollar war chest, but you know Golden Boy's having a pretty decent year. Look, I hate the fact Gabriel Zada was still fighting, but putting that aside, February eighteenth, Azad Hovanesian against Louis Neri is a really good boxing nerds fight. I can't wait to be out there in Pomona. Virgil Ortiz is going to fight Agus Kavalyaskis. I love that. That's going to be a good fight, I think. You know. And so they're going to be involved, and, and i got to get an update on what they're doing with Terrence Crawford and see if they're going to get the services of Edgar Berlanga. But, you know, everyone that wrote them off, look, Oscar for the moment, and this could change within two minutes, he's very motivated. Now, that could change, but he's very motivated right now, and they are making uh, some moves. I, I give them credit. Look, this is a game where you have to be a survivor. Yes, you really do. And that's the one thing about Oscar. He seems to be in a very good place. I saw him like a couple of weeks ago and he was actually joking about his fake abs, which I've called the fabs, which are etched. <laughs> They're not really <laughs> implants, guys. They're etched, the fabs. Yeah, yeah. So and he seems to be have no problem showing them off in his ring championship belt. I don't know if you saw that Instagram thing. But look, they're going to have to make some moves here. But the way they handle Ryan Garcia and his management is going to be a real interesting thing to monitor in the next week or two. I feel like, honestly, if the fight falls apart, you know, I feel like Oscar has a better relationship with Bob that could perhaps bring some things into fruition. Maybe Ryan Garcia versus Jose Pedraza. 
Maybe Ryan Garcia versus Richard Coleman. Just, uh, don't count out Teofimo Lopez. I'm not. I actually, I, I act, mean, in the video I just did, I literally said, you know, I, I could see Ryan fighting Teofimo. I could see that. Yeah. Hey, they, they, they've hey, actually discussed that before, guys. That would be a good fight. It'd be entertaining to watch. Huh? Hey, Steve, I got another question for you. Um, do you, given the fact that we used to have like, you know, Tuesday night fights in the past or, or Friday night fights, do you think they'll ever bring anything back like that? Because I feel like with boxing, a lot of the lesser known fighters and up and coming really need a platform to get known on. And the, those type of platforms really helped to, yeah. you know, you put know, them on TV um, and help, help them to get known. And by the way, Jules, the, the donors are in the, in the chat. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point that you bring up. I'm actually going to be writing a series for Ring Magazine. Me and Doug Fish are talking about how we can help fix boxing or at least change it. Because there's no fixing it. There's no solutions. There really isn't. This game is too far gone. It's too fractured. You're never going to fix it. But one of my one of my columns that I want to write about is how important it was to have an USA Tuesday night fights, yeah. Friday night fights, regional stuff on Fox Sports. Because it gave – a couple things happen when you have that. Number one, you, I you miss, have – I missed that. I missed you, that. Oh, why? that. I grew up in that era. And guys like James Tony, because he was willing to do so because he was a consummate fighter. From 1991 to 1994, he was the most active American champion I've ever seen. He would mm -hmm. fight on HBO for a million or so. And then he'd go on a local show on Fox or Tuesday Night Fights or on USA or Friday Night Fights on ESPN uh, before it became a full-blown series. And he would take a lot less. He was willing to fluctuate up and down between his purses because he understood. He didn't trust himself not to be lazy. And he, he, he told me two years ago, he goes, Steve, I should have done that my whole career. I got Ooh. lazy. But those you know, great platforms are very important because, number one, they also allow the smaller promoters like Joe DeGuardia, Artie Palulo, Thompson Boxing. It gives them an opportunity to showcase their young talent to a national audience. And it also gives other fighters who have fallen between the cracks an opportunity to kind of fight where they otherwise would not unless they sign with a major promoter that may only use them as an opponent. So you know, all the other, of that, that loss to the ecosystem has been very, very damaging. The the other thing, too, is that some uh, – and a lot of you guys watch it like me and Steve did growing up. Sometimes you saw some of the best damn fights with the, on those channels with no-name fighters, but you would have some, like, just really great fights. I've seen a bunch, and I was just like, fuck yeah, this is why I'm a boxing fan, you know? Well, and look that, at that. That's what, Look That's at that never ready that. fight we just saw. That was a great fight against basically no name. I know it was for a title, but we didn't have to pay a dollar for that. And that was a great fight to watch. Let right? me let me read the super chats, guys. JR says, makes sense. Reason Tank didn't leave Showtime. Well, I told you guys that even if the Mayweather thing com comes to an end, don't expect anything dramatic to happen. He'll still be on Showtime, even if Floyd and Leonard are out of the picture. Ebo, Ebo Sosa says, I have an idea. All who bought Errol's shirts should band together and take out a class action lawsuit demanding their money back. Yeah, I, Get these <laughs> dudes where it matters in the pocket. Let the fans. Cap season. Cap season. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, hey guys, uh, two things before I got, I got to get out of here, but two things I want to update you on. My understanding is, is that Vasily Lomachenko has signed on to his part of the deal for the Haney fight. Yeah. Uh, Yes, thank like you. May 20th could be in Las Vegas, but again, they got to get Haney. Haney's looking for more money, but don't believe anything else. Loma, his name is on the dotted line. So if this fight doesn't happen, don't blame that little guy. The other yep. thing is, Usyk Fury is still being hammered out. Um, the Middle East is coming in with a huge offer. Mm. I don't expect. And uh, any type of real announcement to be made till after Tommy Fury fights. Yeah. But there's a very good chance that that fight could end up once again in the Middle East. And, I, and I'm hearing astronomical numbers where I think Fury's going to get between 80 and 100 million. And poor Usyk's only going to get about 60 to 80. So wow. we can start him a GoFund camp. GoFundMe oh, camp. That, oh, that poor man. Yeah. That poor man. He's got a family to feed, guys. Jesus <laughs> Christ. What, what Those bastards. Are they like half of Ukraine or something? I mean, Maybe Solaski will help him out. <laughs> Those fucking bastards. So, Six, so those okay. things are coming together. Um, th those things are being ironed out. 
Um, uh, what other thing is going on here? Uh, in your way, Fulton is good to go. By the way, I love the way Fulton was trying to say, I made this fight for the fans. And I'm like, Steven, you made this fight for you. I hate when yeah. fighters say that. You made the fight because it's the best deal possible. It is. Don't, There's I no mean, other no. fight that he could have had that right. would have got him that Three kind million. of money. I mean, hey, this Steve? is the thing that gets me. I did this for you. Really? So you do it for free? Well, I wouldn't do it for free. Yeah, but you do it for me. It's bullshit. By the way, I want to say one thing. All fighters can make the best deal possible. They can make the easiest fight for the most amount of money, which is fine. Doesn't mean I have to like it. But when Fulton goes on this thing, well, me and Al are amicable and everything. Like, And everyone starts pointing at me because I said he, he laid down the law. I want the fight. It's the truth. I stand it by it. It is the truth. Are you no, no. surprised Al didn't interfere? He didn't have a choice. I look, There's a particular trend now because of the current circumstances. Sorry. There's a reason why Tim Zhu is able to host Tony Harrison. Yes. Tony Harrison was free to do so. Same thing with Stephen Fulton. Look, I want to make this clear. I give Fulton credit. He's taking on a great challenge going overseas. But again, as Chris Rock once said, well, I got a job. Good. Well, I feed my kids. Good. Well, I, you know, I I, I, uh, I don't go rob banks. Good. Well, what do you want, a cookie? You're doing what you're supposed to. But you shouldn't exactly. get extra credit for it. Steve, I, I Steve, mean, let, let me say this, Steve, because this – and this is what I'm saying, that, you know, Josh Taylor came to America – for undisputed i'm giving steven his flowers i'm giving him his credit but do understand that he's not doing anything that a bunch of other foreign fighters haven't already done when they came to america right. so let's not overstate it right. he's and doing it for the same reason they did because that's the best deal right and fulton is getting right around three million from what i think has been published and what i've been told you're doing it because it's the best and that's saying it's not a great challenge or it's a tougher fight but if you were getting the same amount for, let's say, a Brandon Figueroa rematch in Minneapolis at the Armory, uh, would you be going to Japan? So no. I don't want to hear, we're doing it for you guys. No, you're not. You have never done that for us. Exactly. I don't even expect you to do so. Steve, so, Michael Buffer has a question for you. Yeah. He asks, Kim, what's going on with Wilder versus Ruiz? Is Wilder scared? No, I don't think so. Again, I think this has to do, this is my guess. And I'll try to make a few phone calls. They're trying to slot these fights. Like, we don't know when Spence Thurman's going to happen, right? So all of this has to go into place. Because remember, guys, as a company, you don't want to have more than one pay-per-view every five weeks for a very particular reason, the cable bill. Yep. And also the cable systems don't really want to uh, have multiple events in a month because they feel as though it cannibalizes each other. You know, look, as much as I like to fight Loma, Haney on pay-per-view – Ooh, I don't know. I don't Listen, know, guys. I, I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to be honest. I'm going to be honest with you, Steve. There are five pay per views that are supposed to happen at or around that time. You know, you, you know the sequence: yeah. Benavidez versus Plant, Spence versus Thurman, Wilder versus Ruiz, and Davis versus Garcia, and Haney versus Loma. And if I, the consumer, if I had to pick the one that I'm going to buy, if I can only pick one, it's Haney versus Loma. That's just me. I know that everybody might not feel that way, but I don't actually give that much of a fuck about Ryan and Javante. I actually really? don't. Wow. Well, what are they really fighting for? What are they fighting hey, for? Hey, 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 guys, guys, be respectful. That's to determine the best 136 pounder in the world. And if you can't respect <laughs> that, get the fuck out of here. And I get, and I get I get the pleasure paying $80. 135 plus one. I need to get out of here. This is not my type of place. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm being serious. I'm like, look, it's not that it's an intrigue. It's not. It is an intriguing fight. And and because I don't have to choose just one, I would buy it if they get it done. But that's also saying, listen, I'm not spending a dime on Spence versus Thurman. I'm not. Yeah. You, need, you should pay me to watch that shit. <laughs> You'd have to put you should pay me to and plant versus Benavides. Yeah, it's cool, it's cool, but is this really better than B Ball versus Ramirez? Is it really? Because I don't think it is. Is this better than what we just got in the UK with Anthony Yard and 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 Arts were better beef? No, no, it's, no, it's not. Well, guys, no. I'm just gonna leave you with this, okay? All you haters, if you don't buy those pay per views, every single one of them, just want to leave you with this, then you're being racist. <laughs> anyway, guys. <laughs> anyway, guys, I gotta get going here. I'll, I'll, let's talk again next week, okay? Definitely. Oh, thanks, Steve. Always thanks, welcome, bro. Oh man.
Oh, man. Let, let me read this super chat. JR says, Al is keeping Tank out of jail. I Manny agree. Ruiz says, thanks, Steve, for the great boxing insight. Though, though out throughout the years, you do a great job. Great show. Great channel. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate the super chat. Um, We got we the got dope in the building. We got, a crown, we got a crown funny enough money so you can get some glasses to read those super chats. All right. I'm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get my glasses. I'm going to get my glasses. I don't wear them because I have Drew Carey frames. I only use these glasses to drive. But everybody wants to give me shit because I like to squint and look mysterious and sexy. There you go, Rachel. No need to jump on. There's the link. Because mm-hmm. I want to look mysterious and sexy. Everybody wants to give me a hard time. This is, this is fucking <laughs> good, dude. Here we go. I got my fucking glasses. Are you happy? Finally, <laughs> yo. What the fuck, dog. The fly. You got to tie the squinty. You got to tie the squinty. All right. Now, for my next trick, I will solve algebraic equa- equations in pig Latin. All right? <laughs> Very smart. Very intelligent. All right? And, 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 um, I mean, I think I said that to Nestor. I brought it up. Um, I called into the, God, I hate wearing these fucking things. I <laughs> called Nestor and I told him that, look, because remember initially they were talking about Garcia versus Davis and Spence versus Thurman in April. And I said that, bro, they're not going to put those two pay-per-views the same month. Somebody has to move. Somebody has to, because you asking people to pay what a hundred and, 100 and what, 60, 100 and around there in the same month for two fights in this economy. There's no eggs. They're burning down the food places, all, all the food places, all the agriculture's getting burned down. No way this shit happens. And lo and behold, they moved uh, Spence versus Thurman, the last I heard, was out to late May. Because it's like it's common sense, bro. Y'all got too many pay-per-views happening at or around the same time. And... I don't think none of them is going to do all that well, to be honest. Damn, Jules, they capping on you now, man. In chat. Oh, they, why I gotta be? Back, a, if, why I gotta they, be a four-eyed geek, bro? They said if they like, push it back, back don't should, shouldn't they give? Doesn't that give Spence more time to make one forty-seven realistically and make the fight with uh with uh Bud Crawford and get into I another mean, car? Uh, stop talking about Bud Crawford, man. That's, that's I mean, like not happening. Yeah, yeah, I don't even want to waste time on that shit, bro. Luis Puente says YouTubers make fights faster than pros. Fun fact. It is a fun that's it's fun. not a fun fact, but it's a fact. It's a sad fact. Uh oh, Will says, Hello, Clark Kent. Where's Jules? That's my favorite scene, bro. That's the one with Richard Pryor. I love that Superman. Uh. And yeah, yo, I mean, Strackman says Jules reminds me of Be Real from Cypress Hill, not with those frames on, though. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, appreciate you, Anthony, for the Cash App donation. Thank you very much. You didn't have to do that, but you did it, and I appreciate it. And I will use it to buy beer, finance beer on you for me. Send, send Cash Apps. Um, we got Alex Pez in the building. Alex, what it do? It was goody, man. I've been hopping on a little bit late the last few nights, catching like the last 15 or 20 and shit. You know, was, what's up, was Alex? Good. I miss, man. What's the topic right now? Well, we was talking about the whole um Javante Davis and um, you know, just what's going on with their negotiations that basically and, and it's what I've been talking about in the videos that that it the way that Al Heyman negotiates. That's why super fights don't happen. You know what I mean? Like, that's why you told Wilder to reject the hundred million from the zone. You told him to do that. You were supposed to be the main man in charge of what was Spence versus Crawford. And that went nowhere. And now with this, which we understand a little bit more about, you're saying that if your guy gets knocked out, that you get control of the show Anyway, no matter what, you have control of the show and you can't negotiate that way because then you're not giving Golden Boy or, or Oscar any incentive to do this fight. Like, why even do it then? What, what, do, what the fuck do we get out of this? Why, why should we give you access to our guy if our guy knocks your guy out? We don't even get the show? That don't make no sense. That literally makes no sense. All right, I mean, to us, no, it doesn't. But so... We go on and on, right, about the reasons behind the scenes why fights take place or don't take place, mostly why they don't take place. So I'm, I'm going to put it in a different form, right? I'll speak to something that I'm used to and that everyone can understand, right? To be clear, this is my opinion. 
This ain't going to be found in no no clippings, no editorials. No, this is my opinion of being a boxing fan since I was eight years old and I'm a 40-year-old man. All right. You don't sound 40. You sound young. Hey, man, yeah, I did 20 years in the Army, bro, in the infantry, man. That should either kill you early or keep you young. I got lucky. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so here's what I see. And, and like I said, I'm going to relate it to something I know, right? So when you look at a promotional company, right, whether a person likes it or not, that's leadership to those fighters. They're a form of leadership, okay? And then you have some leaders, Al Heyman is one of them, right, where they don't care about the subordinates. That would be the fighters or your paratroopers or your soldiers or the people that work for you, right? As long as the ship continues to sail and profit, they don't care if it's off the backs of the subordinates in a negative or positive manner. Mm -hmm. so like if things go well for the fighter, hey, cool, man, good. But if they don't and I still get my money, I'm still getting paid, PBC still going, still don't care. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's no, yeah, kind of, it does that's because that's what we see. Man, that's the kind of businessman he strikes me as. As like, I don't care if I make it off the uh, off the fucking pride of their backs or the skin of their backs in pain. I'm gonna keep my ship going and I'm gonna get paid. That that I mean that's that's yeah. definitely what I see with the way he does business, because he seems to prioritize, and 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 it's it's obvious why. Like from a business perspective, I get it, but that's why there is a Muhammad Ali Act because you can't act as both promoter and manager and keep everybody's best interests in mind. The best interest of the promoter is his relationship with the network. The best interest of the manager is his relationship with the fighter. And there are times when what's good for the network is not good for the fighter, and what's good for the fighter is not good for the network. If some other network has a fuck ton of money for this fighter, then it behooves him to go over there, ideally. But when you have one guy who's acting as both manager and promoter that creates the conflict of interest that you're keeping or you have been keeping these fighters there when there was more money for them over there and you were doing that to satisfy your broadcast partner your broadcast partner doesn't want the content going across the street even if there's more money across the street for them because without the broadcast partner they're nothing there's no budget yep. so yep. naturally he's always going to and and you know, the Stephen Fulton thing is an interesting thing, but I feel that that's only happening now as of late because you don't really have a choice. You don't have $3 million to give Stephen Fulton. You don't. The Fox deal is kaput. That's done, right? All you have is Showtime, and Showtime ain't got $3 million to give him, bro. So you don't really have a choice. You can't stop him. Credit to Fulton. For pursuing the fight, I'm not gonna. I can't stand yeah, it. Awesome. Credit to him because he doesn't have to, but he's choosing to, and credit to him. But it's also because, well, what was Al gonna give you in place of that? What was he gonna give you? You know, what were you, what were you gonna give Tony in place of what he stands to make in Australia? I think Tony's gonna make decent money in Australia because Tim Zoo can draw in Australia. He's actually on pay per view in Australia, unbeknownst to most. So he, Tony can make money off of that. And it is a, a winnable fight for Tony. He's a more experienced fighter than Tim. Even if I'm not picking him to beat Tim in his own way, yeah, yo, it's a winnable fight for him. So the only reason we're seeing these things as of late is because, Al, you don't have a choice anymore. You don't have nothing for these guys. And that's not talked about enough. Like, why is he listed as an advisor and not a promoter? To circumvent the Ali Act. Exactly. Yeah. That's not talked about enough. He's literally screwing over fighters, but nobody cares. Like, hey, the RZA, the RZA said a long time ago, you got to read the labels. You got to read the labels. For and real, like, and, it, and <laughs> advisor works for the client. The client don't work for the advisor. The no advisor is supposed man. to work for the client. No you, you want the world to believe that the advisor was brokering a deal with N NBC, really? The advisor. The advisor was broken, brokering a deal with Fox and Showtime. Really, the advisor so he looks a lot like a promoter to me. That's what he looks like. And he uses these smaller promotional outfits as his mouthpiece. So if it ever goes down, well, I didn't promote the show. Tom Brown promoted the show. Well, that's, the that's where I got to stop you because, like, BBC has a lot of holding firms that all is named Heyman. 
Well, I mean, his portfolio. No, no, no. So you're right. His portfolio is very diversified. You look at Al's history. He didn't just wake up and end up with PBC. He's been in the game for a long time. He's got a very mm -hmm. diversified portfolio. But I will tell you this. I'll counter with this. When PBC came out, their slogan was, we're going to put the biggest fights on regular cable and give the people what they deserve. What's been mm -hmm. happening since they came out? Exactly. They, they basically littered the market with pay-per-views mm -hmm. and low-performing pay-per-views. Yep. And, and who, who consistently puts title fights on regular cable without even blinking? Top rank. Top yeah. rank. Yeah. 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 Let me read this super chat. I appreciate you, Dennis. Cold one on me, Jules. I appreciate that. I will drink that in the form of beer. Um, um, <laughs> sponsor the beer fund today. Read the ticker. Send the money. Um, um, and yeah, like Top Rank deserves a, a hats off for the the title fights that they put on, but also taking us by surprise with fighters like Liam Wilson. That was an excellent fucking fight, and 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 that's not the first time. That is actually a regular occurrence on Top Rank, like the Navarrete versus Pitufo Diaz fight. That was a super duper fucking fight, bro. And I think that was last year. That fight was fucking bananas. Great fight. Ramirez versus Taylor for Undisputed. No pay-per-view. That was a great fucking fight. The fight that we just got, even though it was a, a Queensbury promotion show, it was because he was the lead promoter, but we saw it here in America by way of ESPN. That was fucking great. That was a great fucking fight. It was a great fight. And, and they're not shelling out. I think they only did one pay-per-view. All of last year, just one, which was uh, Fury versus White. Other than that, they didn't gouge the boxing fans. And that's what Al Heyman is doing. Fucking five pay-per-views in the span of five months. That's crazy, bro. Can I talk about that for a second? So Go ahead. Last year, yeah, they only put out one pay-per-view and they gave a bunch of like title fights. They gave you like Stevenson, Haney, and a bunch of shit. And before the year of that, they gave you, I think it was Valdez... Uh, versus Burchelt, I think, and then Stevenson versus uh, Herring, and then some other good title fights, and they charged another pay-per-view. But you know who complained about both pay-per-view? The PBC fanboys. And I'm thinking, damn, you guys complained about, like, what, two pay-per-views in, like, two years, but you didn't complain about, like, what? Uh, how, how much has PBC had at this point? Close Bro. to maybe, like, 10 and 2, maybe? Maybe seven. I, and, like, and remember that the yep. initial deal with Fox, when they first went into that deal, that was actually their plan oh, to, to do about four to five pay-per-views annually. Bro, every fight don't but Most fights do not belong on pay-per-view. Like, literally. No, I'm sorry. Most fights yeah. don't. And that's another thing. Hey, like, um, and they weren't even good pay-per-views. Like, they were pay-per-views that sometimes had no titles. The key Thurman pay per view was literally the pay per view of the comeback fights. Well, Bro. Charles Martin and Luis Ortiz was pay per view on New Year's Day. That was the New most Sanity. disgusting thing on I New ever Year's saw. Day. I, I just want to point out, guys, that um, there, there's a free boxing, free boxing for all T-shirt on listed on eBay. It's a limited edition. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean. His, his initial strategy, which it looked good on paper, was to buy time in order to make money off the ad revenue. And I don't specifically look, I don't know what went wrong, but it is clear that the model changed. It is. It is. Because, like, you put on more pay-per-views than anybody now, bro. Hey, Jules, like, like, I got a question for you, though. Why on earth would the PBC stick to that model when they know it's a dying, like, a di it's dying? Well, because, they're, because they're, I mean... If you want me to be honest, desperate times call for desperate measures. That's where they are. Like, that's that's why they're doing that. I mean, you would think they would be aware of, like, you know, the streaming and piracy and all that. And then and it's already. Yeah, I'm telling there. you, country, they're acting out of necessity. The networks are not giving them the kind of money that they used to. So their only hope to get at the money to even do these shows it's is to basically go fund me every single fight. That's what they're doing. Like PBC <laughs> is the GoFundMe network, the GoFundMe yeah, promotion. Right, right. right. One no, of the biggest sense. beta switch in history, man. Is is this thing? I'll That's even it. add on to that real quick. Um, what's it called? Not just that, they can't pay their guys the same shit that they yeah. used to pay them anymore. Exactly. Yeah, because look at look at Wilder and the rest nothing. of those guys coming out and complaining about not getting their money. That's now, that's literally what it is. That the networks, the networks are not paying 
the budgets are getting smaller and smaller for them. So their only way to try to keep these guys active and try to make anything happen is to put it on pay-per-view and hope that the fans pay for the operational costs. That's why they're doing more pay-per-views than anybody. Now, Top Rank doesn't have to do that because they're getting a decent budget from ESPN. Matchroom obviously doesn't have to do that because they're getting a decent budget from DAZN. And the same applies to Golden Boy, not that they have very many fights that you could turn into pay-per-views anyway, but better still, they're getting budgets from their broadcast partner where the last thing we heard from the PBC and Fox is that ain't no budget. That like, ain't no budget. They ain't giving no money. Yeah. Them shows, they had to pay for them shits they self. So that's where it's at, man. Yeah, they're the only fans. That's the most accurate de description. Dennis just said it. The, <laughs> only, the only fans, fans of boxing. Of boxing. <laughs> you don't even have fucking ring girls, bro. <laughs> no, but uh, another thing is I'm realizing it's like, hold on. If you have this whole issue with all these guys wanting so much money, why don't you just do what the zone and top rank do anyway? Well, not, I mean, what's it called? A matchroom and top rank do anyway. You want all this cash and you don't want to fight over here? Okay, leave. I don't care about you. I got like 200 other fighters I got to deal with. Get the fuck out. Dana does it too. What's wrong? You want too much money in Ganu? All right, bro. Have a nice day. I I'll tell you what. You're not wrong. But sometimes, and I think, you know, because I've played with this idea before. You got a fighter like Keith Thurman who came back early last year. And, you know, he didn't fight again after that. And I personally believe he didn't fight again after that because he didn't want to. Not because he couldn't. They probably didn't have the money to pay him, you understand. But Keith has to know that, you know, if I go to Boxer, they can find me a fight. If I go to Top Rank, they can find me a fight. If I go to Matchroom, they can find me a fight. That you know well enough that if you go somewhere else, you can work something out. You don't want to work anything out. Well, you wanted to wait. I honestly believe Al's part vampire, though, with his fighters. I mean, he wants to hold on to him so he can suck them dry as long as he can before he let before they go. Dick in the booty deals. Dick in the booty deals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, like, bro, but that, pretty much dry by the time, like, like, what's his name? I'm trying to think of somebody that's, like, dry right now. Gary, mm -hmm. right? Why is Gary mm -hmm. here, bro? I don't know, bro. And like, I don't know. Like, like, or Leo. Leo can retire. Bro. Yeah, yeah why was Leo here, here, man? And he didn't it, fight for like, like, years? <laughs> No but it's like it, it, it like when I hear this, it, it pays me to, to to hear that this 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 manager, this this overhyped middleman, um, wants to keep have the rematch in case Tech loses on Showtime. But Showtime ha right now is going through a policy of austerity, man. Whereas the Zone, they have the operating budget to set up shows internationally, so they have the bread to fucking make to make them. Why don't you start, you know, be your fucking good, a good little boy, get your fucking cut, your 50% cut, and let your guy go over to the zone and, get, and make that money like he was supposed to go, get, I guess, to the farm. Because the other thing is that, and somebody said this, which is a valid point, that whoever's in control of the show decides who the referees are and the judges and all that different stuff. So that level of control, obviously, it favors the house fighter, and they want Javante Davis to be the house fighter under all circumstances. He's never going to be the away fighter. So you, you can see that. But what's ridiculous is that even in a situation where he loses, you're saying you won't concede anything. Even in a situation when he loses, that communicates fear. Because if you believed, for example, if you believed 100% that Javante was going to knock this man out, what happens after that don't even matter. Like, oh, you want him to go to the zone? Sure, but he's not going to because he's going to knock out your guy. You know, very, you're not confident in him. You're not. The, like At the very least, I mean, a lack of faith, you know, that he's going to win. You got to remember. That's, that's just you, no way to negotiate a deal. You got to remember, though, these are the same guys that wouldn't even let him fight Machado, a man that literally got sparked by or a gas Tevin station Farmer. worker. Alberto Machado a or Tevin worker. Farmer. It's, it's, yep, it's, it's, yep, it's, it's really no. ridiculous. And, and that's what's not being said. And it's not going to get said because everybody keeps playing this stupid ass obtuse game like you don't got no common sense there has to be a reason for two promotional outfits with two separate platforms to come to the table and do a fight there has to be something in it for everyone and you're saying that there's nothing in it for oscar then why the fuck would he give you access to his fighter there's nothing in it for him okay i i, I got a question i know that we got the big boys and stuff but how many other boxing promoters are out there man Lots. 
lots like uh most people don't know this uh DAZN struck a deal a content deal with a canadian promoter named uh lee baxter they're going to be getting shows from out of canada and i think one other promoter in canada i'm not sure but i think one other promoter there's uh, about three promoters that i know of in australia no limit tasman and i forget what the other one is uh, there are several smaller promoters here in America. Main events is still around, you know. They just don't have a, a broadcast deal, but main events is still around. Joe DeGuardia, Star Boxing, they're still around. Thompson Boxing is still around. King's Promotions, who actually promoted Alicia Bumpgartner before Matchroom, they're still around. There's lots of small promotional outfits, just like Marv Nation, that don't have content deals, but they also don't have a very big stable of fighters either, which is why mm -hmm. they don't have content deals. But there's yeah, lots of them all over the world. Yeah, and it's like some of them, like I just think of them like like main events. You brought you brought them up to me. That seems like right now at this point, like a zombie corporation. Well, almost, but it's not because the thing is they do do shows. You know, these smaller promotional outfits that don't have content deals. It's not like they're not doing their own shows. They do do their own shows, but they're very small shows, very small local shows. And they don't necessarily have, you know, Olympians and stars and, and that 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 pool of of fighters because you know where those fighters go and you know who, who picks up those fighters right out of the fucking amateurs. The major outfits get them. So what's left over is what goes to the smaller promotional outfits and they work with what they have. Mm -hmm. I just feel like, you know, the network should just go with them and go a la carte, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, like uh, I like the Lee Baxter deal. I'm not going to lie. I only like the Lee Baxter deal in Canada for the zone because now I get to watch Taylor Robertson. Um, I like the Eye of the Tiger management deal. Like, Eye of the Tiger management in Canada, for example, mm -hmm. that's not a big promotional outfit. They're not big, but they got a couple of fighters that I like. They got Christian, they got Mobili, they got Mary yeah. Spencer, and a couple of other fighters. So I like that deal. Top Rank made that deal. I like that deal. They also have Yvonne Michelle. They have Jim. That's another smaller promotional outfit. It's not a big outfit, but it is a well-to-do established outfit in Canada. That's why they have the Pascal um, IBF. Are they, are they showing that on ESPN? More than likely. Okay. Look at who he's the mandatory for. Who, if John Pascal? Yep. Yeah, look at who. If he wins, who's he the mandatory for? Isn't he the IBF route? Mm -hmm. And who's got who's IBF champion? Artur. And where's his who's his promoter? Yvonne Michelle, right? No. Bob. Bob. Top oh, rank. Bob. My sorry, sorry. I'm and top rank is in bed with who? Yes, man. Yeah. There you go. Boom. They'll probably show that fight so that they can, I guess, reintroduce people to John Pascal on the premise that he may end up fighting Artur Better Beef because Top Rank, they're, sm they're smart over there. What they did by picking up Eye of the Tiger shows and Yvonne Michelle shows is they still provide content to their broadcast partner through Top Rank without spending Top Rank's money, without spending any money from their budget because the money for those shows is coming from Yvonne Michelle, is coming hey. from Eye of the Tiger management. It's not coming from Top Rank. Hey Jules, don't ask me. You mentioned Universum. What do you know about them? They're a German. I know album. Universum, the German. I know Universum, the German one, but they do a lot of German shows. So I mean, unless you watch a lot of German fighters, you're not going to know them. Just like uh, World of Boxing in Russia. I know World of Boxing because I sometimes watch those Russians, and and you know that they are very well to do outfit in Russia. They put on a lot of shows on a regular basis, but. Obviously, people in America are not that interested in Russian fighters. Right, you know? right. Yeah, I'm not no. gonna lie though. I wouldn't mind a German, uh, a German boxing comeback. To be honest, uh, at least that like me like super middleweight or something. I kind of miss like seeing some of those stadiums. Like I saw some of the uh, the old Vladimir like Klitschko fights, and it's insane. I was like, damn, all of that hype to watch the most boring man fight for like five minutes. Yeah. Bro, that's insane. It's like a German soccer stadium, huh? <laughs> Yo. It's yeah, but I'm gonna be real. I'd be more interested in watching German soccer than watching some of Klitschko's fights. Like, no offense <laughs> to him, like, he's a great champion, but nah, man, I don't listen, want to bro. This. What was German, what was uh, a strong presence in the German boxing scene was Kel and Nisei Sarlin. And in many ways, they still have the inside track on Germany, it's just that there's not a proliferation of German talent right now. So, you see where they moved into, they moved into the UK market. After they paired up with Wasserman, you know, another German 
another German shit. But they're really focused on UK shows. You don't see Kale and Nise Sarlin promoting German fighters that much anymore. They're all in on the influencer business and the UK business. Because Chris Eubank is not a boxer fighter. He's a he's a Sarlin fighter. He just fights on Sky, but he's a he's a Wasserman fighter. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between like a a, a platform deal and then a promotional deal. Yeah, like because they're because Chris is on the same platform as a lot of boxer fighters, he's gonna have access to them. But he's not an according to Hoyle boxer fighter. Richard Reactpour is a boxer fighter. That's a boxer fighter. But Chris, Chris is with Wasserman. Liam Smith is with boxer, and he whooped Chris's ass. And and they're gonna have their rematch, you know. I wonder. I wonder if Chris is gonna get it together to win that rematch because it just looks like he's in a bad way. Like, bro, they wilt that guy out there for you to whoop his ass. That was supposed to be a guy that's up your alley, and it looked like you don't want to be in that alley no more, or you can't be in that alley no more. You know, if, if they did bring back like Tuesday night fights or Friday night fights, I wonder what platform or channel or you know what who they would use. Well, it has to be a platform that has a surplus of money to pour into new projects. I wanted to address that question because I would like to see that too. But the reason that we don't see it is because there's a scarcity of resources. You know, like what top, about rank, top rank is kind of doing that with the with the contracts that they signed with Canadian-based promoters like Eye of the Tiger and uh Yvonne Michel. michelle They're, they are kind of doing that because those are domestic level fights that you're getting and some of them are really good like the last one mobili had with vaughn that was a really good fight but that wasn't a world level fight that was a domestic level fight this is a guy who's coming through the ranks to get to world level so even if we're not getting a tuesday night fights or a friday night fights top rank is kind of doing that with the eye of the tiger management deal and the um the yvonne michelle deal Match room, well, not really match room, but the zone. They're kind of doing that with the Lee Baxter deal in Canada. That those are going to be local shows with local guys. They're not champions yet. They're not big names yet. But it's low income boxing. That that's really what it is. It's low income boxing. You know what? The zone might be a good candidate for that. I mean, I know they just spent a bunch of money, but they really might. And I'm telling, I'm telling. I said it in the video that I did about Justice Hooney. That, yeah, you know, they might ship Justice Hooney out every so often to the UK. Or maybe they ship him out to America once or twice. But what that, de- what procuring him actually enables them to do is bring you Australian boxing. Yeah. That's what that enables. Because he was he was already with somebody. I think he's with, I don't think he's with No Limit. Is he with No Limit? Or is he with Tasman? I think he's with Tasman. And Tasman does a bunch of shows down there, bro. Like No Limit does a bunch of shows down there. They all do a bunch. They all have their own shows. So even if you're not getting a Friday Night Fights, what was Friday Night Fights? Good local boxing. Well, that's what those shows are. Those are local fighters. Those are not your Canelo and your and your yeah, Callum yeah. Smith. You know, those no, are were, local fighters. They were no names, yeah, that people didn't really know about. But again, like, and I reiterate this, and I'm sure you've seen it too. Sometimes you saw the best fights with those no-name guys. No, man. yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. I, like, I, I remember when, like, just two days out of the week, Tuesday and Friday night fights, you know, you could keep up with all the boxing you needed on the up-and-comers just yeah. those two days of the weekdays. Well, and then we plus it with the weekend fights. But now you want to keep up with up-and-comers, you got to do your research. You got to dig literally. in. Literally. Yeah. Pro box, and then, and then when, they, when they finally pop up in the mainstream, you kind of already know who they are because you've been watching them on those, yeah. on those you know, those platforms. So you're like, oh, I remember that guy. I wonder, you know, and, you know, then you want to see how well he's going to do against yeah. your favorite and fighter then, or something. And Pro then I think, it, I think it creates a chasm, you know, between people like ourselves, right? You know, you got the YouTubers and YouTube followers <laughs> who like to talk about this shit. We all used to be able to see it, you know, on these weekday fights, but now... It's motherfuckers who are doing their research and motherfuckers who ain't. And then, you know what I mean? You got to disparage. No, you're not wrong. And, and oh, I agree. A lot of the female fights that I'll talk about in the first segment, if you look at those cards, those are whole cards. I'll just talk about the fighter that I'm watching because that's the fighter that I think is going to make something out of themselves. But if you look at, you know, if, if you go to Box Rec and you look at those shows that they're local shows like Raquel Miller, for example, she's about to fight in a local show in Mexico. There's a bunch of other fighters on that card. I'm talking about Raquel because I think Raquel has talent and I think she's going to make it. So I'll focus on Raquel. 
but there's a lot of other fighters and a lot of other fights on those cards. And it's just like you said that unless you're doing the research, you're not even going to know them shows is happening because they've made it that way to where it's like some underground cult type nerd type shit that you got to go look it up and do all this research. Yeah, you got to search the dark web to, for, to, to find new shows. For real. Shout out to my man, Undefeated Journeyman. Here's the beer money for when Frankie... S oh, thank God for you. Really, you were going to say something. What, what, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was going to say that Pro Box TV, they do a lot of local shows. Or I, I wouldn't say that they're, they're national level guys, but they're probably like right below that. So kind of like what that was, those Friday night or those Tuesday night fights. They do that, and sometimes they have those on Wednesdays, and that's a really, really mm. cheap product to get. I think you. Yeah, it's only two dollars a year. Yeah, it's yeah. actually a really, really good product too. It's it's well uh, produced. So it I is. Out it there is. Check it out. Uh, is it a, is it an app or is it on or is it online? No, it's yeah, an well, app. It, that's that's where Pascal fought Meng Fang Long, which was a very good fight. That's where um the flyweight, not not the flyweight, the light flyweight champion, the Puerto Rican kid, WBO champion that's about to fight Ken Shiro. He fought there. He had a decent fight on there. I've caught one or two fights, and it, it is true. The production value for what it costs is actually pretty good. And they but did it, a they did a they did a um a, a tournament too throughout probably four or five months. That was really good uh, quality product. And uh, they'll have a uh, Pauli Maginati, and then sometimes Antonio Tarver has been on there. Roy Jones. So you yep. get a lot of good com uh, commentary. And uh, they have Wednesday night fights. Sometimes a lot of times on Fridays. When there's not fights going on, they have it on there. Not only can you watch it as an app, but you can also watch it like in a browser. And it's really easy to navigate. And I think I paid 18 bucks for a year. It's really cheap. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually really good. Um, I'm going to say that what we really need, honest to God, is for crime and drug money to come back to boxing. Come back, create oh, that wow. surplus of money. Oh. I'm, so I'm sorry. <laughs> we need that because it's money laundering and Jesus Christ that makes all things possible. And laundering money creates that surplus that can lead to other shows, you know, so you can fudge the numbers and so that the government don't come sniffing around like, hey, 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 I'm a promoter. What we need in boxing is more drug money, more criminals, more cartels. Yeah, we need that. Boxing was great. The old days when the mafia was involved, boxing was fun, man. Fuck. Boxing was wonderful when the mafia was involved. Bring back the mafia. Bring back. What do you think? The era was so successful. What do you think he comes from? The era he comes from. Well, you, you, he got the you, secret. you think recipe, you man. think that purse, that nineteen million dollar purse that Marvin Hagler got in eighty seven, well, was straight from the casinos? No, man, that's fucking Union Dues money. You, you know, know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, there's also Tom Thompson boxing on YouTube and Twitch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, and before so we go too too deep into that though, hey, real quick, uh, hey panel, uh, shout out to little props to Jules for getting his little shout out from Amanda Serrano on Twitter. Oh he's yeah, man, look, man. Down, man. That's what's look, up. I've been rocking with her for a while. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I know, was... but that was the first time I seen her like throw a shout out on Twitter and shit. Amanda, look, Amanda's a, a great lady, man, and and. That's how you know she's a great lady, because anybody who's been following this channel will know that I was not easy on Amanda. When it came to those Katie, no, no. Those Katie Taylor negos, I was not easy on Amanda. But that shows you how gracious she is that we got to bury the hatchets. And I said, look, I'm not your enemy. I'm just honest. I don't work for nobody. I, 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 that's what I, I don't work for nobody. I say exactly what I think. That doesn't make me your enemy. I want you to do well, and I want you to succeed. And if you want undisputed at Featherweight, go for it. I'll support you. And that's how we bury the hatchets. And I'm all for it. Yeah, it's, it's like, look, the media is for sale, bro. The media is for sale. And I'm not being well, regular. Like, I'm, I mean, think about this. And I wanted to bring this point up. Whenever you have a guy like uh, Espinosa going on a specific – uh, Chan, I don't say Chan, I guess space. It's only really geared to talking about one uh, uh, one platform of boxing. Well, then of course those guys are going to just propagate. Um, you know, you're feeding off of each other. So how can you be? How do you have the capacity to to do things on a, to be objective if you're really only focusing on people who are going to pair what you have to say? So it's it's like a, it's a echo chambers all the time. It's it's insulated, and and that's I mean like. There's so many microcosms within boxing for why boxing is where it is in America that the PBC tried to create a biosphere. Well, you can't expand your audience and reach new customers, get more revenue by being a biosphere. It's too insulated. The people 
that the consumers, all the other consumers want to see your fighters fight, they may be on other sides of the street. And it's up to you to figure out what deal structure works best to where you get something out of this and I get something out of this. And I've maintained for a long time now a bartering system. It's the only way it's going to work. You I'll, give you, I'll give way. you a good example real quick. Sorry, let me just add one more thing. So like today I was on I was on Facebook and I was seeing uh, the reports of the uh, zone was expanding the NFL, right, to do mm. internationally. Now, anybody who loves sports, uh, regardless of his boxing or, or, you know, us here at this channel, you know, we, we talk primarily boxing, but everybody who's big into sports wants to see sports grow, especially boxing, right? But what I saw there was just the tractors. When you're part of a movement that is rooting for something to fail, then what does it say uh, about what you're supporting and about the people you're supporting? I mean, they're all always negative. They always want to see something fail. They want to see things go bad. I would think that if we want um, this sport to grow, because it is stagnating, we want to support each other to see that it grows. Look, I don't care if PVC grows and it gets better and becomes healthier. I'm all for that. Because well, the funniest thing, look, villain, the funniest thing about PBC is we're not asking pbc to do something that we're not asking every other platform to do like we literally expect the same of all of them like literally i'm not asking the pbc fighters to do anything that i'm not asking the matchroom fighters to do or the top rank fighters or the golden boy fighters when jaime walked away from charlo for example i gave him just as much shit as i give the pbc fighters on a regular basis right, it's not right. exclusive to Oh, I'm not gonna say nothing bad about him. I say bad shit about Jaime all the time, all the time. Right. All right, well, so it's, you, you gotta be able to you gotta be able to say bad shit about your favorite fighters, you know? Yeah, well, like like that's, that's the point that that at the end of the day, what they're doing is is is, and I don't like to get into it because there's no way to address it without turning it into a conversation that I don't want to have. And but but that's the reason that it is the way that it is. That like y'all doing some old of a bullshit that we not doing we here for fights bro if you here for guidance or clarity I, I don't know what you here for i'm just here for fights bro that's it that's it and if the pbc got they act together of course i would support it because what do i want fights right exactly I just say there's something hey, weird about like that I, you know what i always say I like i'm here for boxing not for fighters man yeah like and when like, somebody goes somebody about yo hey dog i'm like what's up about hey who you got in this fight I first thing I say to them is, who am I? Who do I want to win, or who do I think is going to win? Because sometimes that ain't the same fucking answer, right? I'm yeah, like, like, like to win, speaking, but I think speaking, he's going to win. Speaking of boxing, pro, uh, pro box TV is only eighteen ninety nine a year. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's, it's good. I, People, I just subscribed. <laughs> yo, yes, subscribe. yo, that shit is it's it's deep. Like honestly, it's better than I thought it would be, and given the price, and and it's like yo, if you see a Benavides, for example, I'm a consumer. You see a Benavidez who's on the same side of the street as a Charlo, as a Morel, and now an Andre. And all I keep hearing about is, oh, Canelo, 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 Canelo. And then I look at your schedule last year. You fought once. What about Morel? What about Charlo? Where, where are they? Why aren't you making these fights? It's a common sense argument. You're not giving me what I want. I want Benavidez versus Charlo. I haven't gotten it yet. I wanted Benavidez versus Morel. Listen, bro, I understand that I'm a content creator, so I get in depth. But at the end of the day, I'm a consumer. You're I don't so need to know. I don't need like I don't have to get into A, B, C, and D. I only do that because it makes me money. If I'm just a consumer, all I see is y'all don't make fights, bro. That's all I see. I don't need to know why y'all don't make fights. And you're still a fight fan on top of it, you know. So you know I mean, like, like you think that Joe Blow walk in the street has all the time that I might have to explore this shit and get into the intricacies of the story, I'll tell you right now, he doesn't. He doesn't. That guy will watch a channel like this one to get the gist of it, but he himself does not have time for these arguments these guys have on Twitter, This stuff, the content that I create. They don't have time to do all that themselves. They got jobs and families to feed. They got other shit to do. I do it because it makes me money. So naturally, I have an incentive to do it. But Joe Blow walk in the street. If Ryan and Javante don't fight, he don't need to know all that shit. All he know is y'all not fighting and, 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 and Spence and Crawford not fighting.
and and Wilder and Joshua didn't fight, and that'll be enough for them to see the pattern. That'll be enough to like, yo, why are you? You know what that means, Jules? More money for the UFC. Really though, really though, it, it's not a hard pattern. Like it's not a hard pattern to put together. That's one thing that, and that's why you're seeing a proliferation of individuals here in America that are making the decision that no, Al Heyman is bad for boxing. Every time you're involved, something fucks up. And you're not involved in the Fulton fight. I see so-and-so trying to say, oh, I thought Al Heyman didn't facilitate that. He didn't facilitate that fight. Akihiko Honda is facilitating that fight. Well, and and the only reason happened. you're seeing it, it's not because of Al Heyman. It's because of Bob Arum and his yep. ESPN deal. Al Heyman has fuck all to do with that fight. By the way, Thank I just want to thank the Honorable... I just want to thank the Honorable Akihiko Honda. Akihiko yeah. son. And thank God that he's not involved because if he was, he'd find a way to fuck it up and stop it. The, 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 the shit that goes on, and that's why I don't want to do that anymore because I'm like, bro, I'm not going to be arguing for free with you mouth breathers on Twitter. No, I don't make any money off of doing that. You want to see me, you come here. I'll embarrass you live and I'll make like two, three hundred dollars in an hour. But other than that, don't talk to me. Don't argue with me. Don't worry about what I think about boxing. Just keep my metrics up. And we get a good laugh at a lot of people's stupidity because some of the shit they've said when they've come here has just been out yeah, of this world. Like, like, like the shit is ch- – like, bro, I, look, there was a dude just now. I, I talked about the Benavidez. Um, Benavidez said he would KO Bivol, yada, yada, yada. And I said that, oh, that that like that's just a, a dry promotion for your mid-fight. And a guy, you know, he leaves a comment – Oh, how you saying that, but you hyped about the zone schedule. And I told the guy, well, show me the fight on the zone that costs eighty dollars. On the schedule, right? You posted a schedule. Show me the one that costs eighty dollars. Because I see two title fights that don't cost me eighty dollars. Cordina versus Rakamov is a title fight. Somebody's getting knocked I'm out in that fight. fight. I think it's gonna be Rakamov. Somebody's no, getting knocked no. out in that fight. And that's for a title. That's for the IBF title. Wood versus Lara. Somebody's getting knocked the fuck out in that fight. That's for the WBA title. And neither one of those two fights cost me $80. This bullshit does, though. And what's this for? An interim title? This ain't yeah. like undisputed. And this. Oh, hey, hold on, man. Hold on. You just got me thinking about something, Jules. Hold on, man. Hold on. I just saw this shit today. I might be a little Where'd behind. You know, I might have covered it, but. Yo, what the fuck is up with Zerto and Rosado, B? That's the worst shit I've ever Hold seen, up. I know bro. you just had a little tough decision <laughs> loss to Bibble, but you really going to take a tune-up in the form of my man Rosado? Come on, man. Oh, that shit is, for for yo, that shit is so crazy, oh, bro. Like, don't oh, get me wrong. I ain't going to lie. I'm going to get hate for this. I love Rosado. I'll watch him fight. No, I love Rosado, bro. Warrior, bro. Man. It's but that. It is Zerto, like, what? If it's, it, it's like there has to be a precedent. Like, for example... If you told me that Bechtemir was going to run it back with Rosado, I need that. Because yeah, you got, makes you, sense. You, you not you the fuck you out. You need, to, you need to get that back. So I need that. You know, give me – I'll take that. Or if it's Rosado versus Berlanga, give me that. Because I like that. I need that. And I don't even know if Edgar can beat Rosado. There has to be an element of competition. With Zerto and Rosado, look, I don't think Zerto is great, but I know he's gonna beat Rosado, bro. Yo, Joe, this is Zerto and Rosado. Who is a middleweight and he's moving up to one seventy five to fight Zerto? Are you this, this take point, on a dude who's only lost in his whole fucking career is against Bill? This, Come on, man. This, this is this is actually reverse bootleg. This is actually the warmer version of fucking uh, Benavides Mr. Lemieux. Bro, I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm laughing, dog. You know, like there's, up, there's literally fights that you could put Rosado in that I'm like, no, I need that. Like, if you told me it's Mobili versus Rosado, yeah, I, I, I watch that shit. I like that shit. Um, but but look, and this is Berlanga, man. Get and this is what and this is what I mean. Peep the shit. I have the Tiger management, and this fight, I'm telling you, watch this fight because somebody gonna get knocked the fuck out. They're giving us Mobili versus Gangara. I know that most people don't know Gangara and most people don't know Mobili. But if you want to see two motherfuckers punch each other to one of them in the hospital, watch that fight. Mobili versus Gangara. ESPN Plus by way of Eye of the Tiger Management. That's, that's going to be a good fight. Nine. It's going to be a good week? fight. I never so seen Mobili fight, but I know Gangora is either a knocked out or get knocked out motherfucking. 
I'm telling you, and Mobili, Ma, listen, man, I put Mobili in a couple of intros. That kid is a motherfucking savage. Like, he, it, he fight like he trying to kill you. Is it going to be the equivalent of, like, that Dan Severin fight in Japan where he fought that big Japanese dude and they stood there and punched each other in the face? Yeah. Oh, that was the manliest fight that was ever fought by a man. That was I the, know, man. That was yeah, wild. Yeah, the porn man. stash and all that shit. The porn hey, stash. Was the the tough man contest. Yeah, professionals, that'd be the fight, dog. Yeah, it man. wasn't an iota. It wasn't an iota of boxing or martial no, arts. No, in there that was fight. no movement. They were just standing there punching the shit out of each other. In the hey, face. that's a hey, oh, that's bro, a WBO man. sanctioned tough man contest match right there. <laughs> bro, that shit. That they, they wasn't no boxing and no jujitsu. No, no. It was just I'm gonna punch you and you gonna punch me. And one of us is going to get hurt. And that's yep. all it was, bro. But, but it was in Japan, though, see? So it was a thousand times better than here, man. That shit was brutal. Oh, you, know, the world. you got the dude screaming and shit in the background and shit? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Jay yeah, Flint says, IQ, what happens yep. to David if Plant wins? Come to curveball. Catastrophe. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, it's a, it's a catastrophe in every way you can imagine because it's not just a catastrophe for David, it's a catastrophe for the PBC. You have a better chance of turning David into a star than Caleb because you know he low key trying to have an inside track on the Latino fans. But if he lose that joint, all this shit about you being a monster, like it ain't oh, the thing, it ain't the thing God. not gonna watch you I'm, fight. I'm gonna be it, honest with you. I think he's gonna lose this fight. He might. I have him losing the Caleb plan. I don't even like I, I said that Canelo were having an easy fight with Benavidez because I even think he stops Benavidez late because I don't think Benavidez has that good of an inside game that and Canelo can attack that inside until he gets like to a point that he has to block his body. Then he goes to the eye and everything and it stops late. Like Benavidez, I don't dis- no, I don't disagree with you because the other thing is look at how long David has been at super middleweight. That can't be healthy. It's just it can't be healthy for a man that size to cut down to one sixty eight all these years. And and also how inactive he's been too. I mean, he hasn't really been fighting very much. So that's the other thing. When was that Lemieux fight? What? Like, That's like almost two years ago. If you look, not two, not two, but it was like a year ago. Not yeah. two. Yeah. It was over it was a, year like a year ago. It was over a year and a half ago. And and, and look at and look at and look at when the fucking plant fight is. It's in fucking March. But like, yeah. if if somebody he's never fought a guy really. That's gonna move around the whole wing. It's the guys that's gonna stay in front of him. The a place not gonna stay in front of him the whole time. He's gonna Hell box that. him. He's gonna move away on that. That's gonna might give him problems. I mean, based on styles. I mean, I, I, I'm calling it a 50 50 fight. But I want to touch on something Jules was, 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 was scratching on when you mentioned uh, the problem for the PBC. Here's what I'm looking at. Going off of my man Super Chat. If David loses to Caleb, that eliminates the entire super middleweight division from PBC stable from having a shot at big money fight. And here's why. If he loses the plant, the PBC's entire middleweight stable has one hope for a fucking the money fight, which is Canelo. And that's a man who already got knocked out by Canelo. And what are the chances Canelo gives him the rematch? That's what I'm saying. It would be a catastrophe because then let's say just hypothetically, irrespective of what we actually think in this hypothetical scenario where Caleb wins, the fight to make then becomes Caleb versus the other guys, Caleb versus David Morrell, Caleb versus Demetrius Andre, Caleb versus Charlo. And look, I'll be honest, those aren't bad fights. They're like, none of those fights are bad fights, but they're not money fights. They're not, they're not money fights. Those fights are maybe $2 million fights at best, 2 million. You, you shouldn't pay those guys more than a million honestly because they can't bring you back more than that with the fight they can't so if you pick so you know like let's just say okay you gave caleb three million are you good for three million when you fight can you generate that no you won't and that's the problem david has to win this fight for more reasons than one like bro you lose this thing well there go the chicano fans and the only way which is what makes it a catastrophe the only way you get them back is fighting the Mobilies. These other guys that are out there, you have to fight them to, to redeem yourself. Because if you play it safe after that, 
Who do you think is going to watch that shit? I'm not. I'm old. Yeah. If it's 12 a.m., you better be in a goddamn fight, a real fight, because I'm old, bro. I ain't going to be staying up late to watch you play it safe. And if you think for one second that Showtime didn't notice PBC's track record with Fox and they're not on thin ice with Showtime from the get-go, you got to be crazy. Listen, yeah, the way that the dime counts right now for PBC and Showtime. The way that they did Showtime was fucked up, and that doesn't get talked about enough, that as soon as they struck the deal with Fox, they funneled over their A-listers over to Fox. The guys that were being groomed on Showtime, like Spence and Wilder, that most of their Sorry. fights were on Showtime, they took those guys to Fox, and they left Showtime with what? They, they didn't have nothing on there for a little bit. They didn't have nothing. Showtime's already got enough problems right now, so PBC cannot. There's like the guy said before. There's no mistakes. It has to be perfect. It has to. They need it to. They. Good, the good. saving grace for David is that in spite of Caleb having a decent style, uh, he is hittable, and he does gas out after a couple of rounds. He does gas out, and and the the, the, the indictment on him is: look, you gas out with this guy, uh, he's going to start to hit you clean, and and you'll probably get knocked out. Yeah, like I think Plant's a more technical. Better boxer, but with David's age, size, and strength, Plant cannot afford to make a mistake. He cannot make a mistake. That can, I'm, t- I'm yeah, like, and I Victor Conti, Victor Conti, Victor Conti, let it be known that David Benavides has enlisted the aid of Memo Heredia, the very infamous Memo Heredia, and all his cocktails and shit. I don't know. Someone said like on um, the at best they kind of were just like. Plant's training, it doesn't even really need to be on the skills because he's way better than David in skills, period. It really needs to be like a Kelly Pavlik-esque training camp, only conditioning. You need to be able to run for years. You need to be able to absorb a thousand punches. Just that like might have not a, be a bad idea, man. That might yeah, not be a bad have idea. Have a Kelly Pavlik versus Jermaine Taylor type of training camp. Like you need so that. you're saying Memo could help him out with that? No, I'm saying that Memo's already helping out David, likely to make the weight. Oh. What, what, look, I don't think that um, I don't think that David needs certain drugs because of where he is. But what he does need is to cut weight because he's very big for that division. He's actually very big. This guy likely walks around at two hundred pounds. So if he needs anything, he needs a weight cutting agent, something to get all that water out of his body but retain muscle but burn fat. A vasodilator mm-hmm. for the volume that he has. All these different things. Right. And if I had to guess, he might be on a substance not dissimilar from clenbuterol because mm-hmm. that's what he needs. He doesn't need the other stuff. You know, he's big and he's strong. He doesn't need yeah. stuff for that. He needs stuff to make weight. Now, now what can Caleb take to, to give him more, like, energy in the later rounds? Meldonium. He needs a vasodilator. Caleb doesn't, Caleb doesn't need an anabolic steroid. But if, but because he has a gas tank issue, that means you need a vasodilator of some kind. And there are lots. There are EPO vasodil- would nice if people weren't searching for it now. Yeah. You know, so, you know, being that there's no belt on the line, there, there really shouldn't be no Vada testing, really. No, I mean, there's a fucking interim belt. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that there's shit. an interim belt. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's that, that that's what he needs. He needs something for stamina. So that's osterin, that's meldonium, something that will open those airways so that more air gets in, you know, because he, 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 you know, he, he doesn't need certain shit. He doesn't need certain shit. He no. just needs that so that he can last. But but we'll see. You know, what the other thing about that fight, which is sad, is it's not a bad fight. It's just not pay-per-view worthy. Like, no, it's not, bro. We get better fights than that. We get full-fledged, full-on title fights on regular ESPN that are wars. So why should I give you 80 of my dollars for this? For what? Jules, you just upset Mirage because you were, uh, you were insinuating that David Benavides is a is a drug cheat. So you you've heard, you've heard his uh. Your- hey man, leave Mirage alone, man. We was doing all right. Why you got to bring? <laughs> well, he definitely did. Get Look, I'm I'm being fair, Mirage. I actually think they're both on pads. My honest though, why really? did you all of a sudden? Why is David Benavides? Okay, hold on. How is Caleb on pads? Because right. he looks. Have you never seen Rocky, man? How you know He's Caleb ain't in them? In, uh, in well, how did he not thought the rail? I know you ain't lifting them motherfucking wagons and shit. Well, technically, he was on coke, Benavides. I mean, he lost. Look, his look, the look, time. guys, guys. For what it's worth, I think they're both on pads. Why? Caleb <laughs> is over. Caleb is over there with Mister Victor Conti at snack. 
And I'm pretty sure he's cooking up all sorts of cocktails and shit over there. I'm just being real. I don't I'm not think why. If he is on peds, he needs to ask Victor Conti for his money back, bro. I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't punch hard, you don't move that quick. Hey, I got a saying for computer speed. You get tired. What is that pet nope. for, bro? What are they for? What are you using? Yeah, you sure I'm you're saying, not giving well, gummy vitamins? My view, man. This is my view when it comes to peds. And this goes for every competitive sport. And I'm going to say this. And if y'all don't get it, you don't get it. But here's what I'm going to say. There's only one real drug cheat in sports. The rest are just trying to keep up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we all know who that is. <laughs> I'm but telling you, say, like this. Plant needs to pace himself in that fight, man. I'll say that, look, you want my honest opinion? All those guys are on something. And I didn't used to think exactly. that. Exactly. It's I a did. matter of who gets caught. Everybody's doing something in some way, shape, form, or fashion to gain it. Because you know what? Because once one motherfucker starts it, everyone's got to do it because you got to keep up. Yeah. Keep up and, and Lance Armstrong, he said it best. You know, at that level, everybody's on it at that level. At the, no, and, and Nick Diaz said it best. All y'all on steroids. And what did Jose Canseco say? He's like, you asking me who's doing it? He's like, the easier question is who's not. Yeah. There is a, yep. what's it called? There's this runner, right? And I forgot what race it was, but they said it was like one of the most corrupt races they saw in the Olympics, right? And he was complaining that his opponent was like on steroids. And I mean, I didn't need him to tell me shit. I could see it. Like the dude looked fucking huge. But literally right after I, I watched that video, I went to the comments and everybody's like, yo, why is this bitch complaining about steroids? Bro, you were on them. You got caught literally right yeah. after. <laughs> what, what, like, it really like, is, what it really is, is about. that your steroids are better than mine, and no. that's not fair. Yo, no. Joel, Carl, Carl Lewis basically complained to Ben Johnson, yo, you're a better cheater than me. That's what it is. <laughs> These motherfuckers ain't lying, bro. They're not playing. They mean it. Oh, yeah. I just got a text message. Give me a second. No worries. Is David been Venus after you? Is that what it is? He heard you shit? Yeah, it's David. He's mad. Uh, David ain't going to text you. It's going to be his daddy, bro. It's David Sr. texting you and shit. Watch it. His brother may come and stick his tongue out at you. And not I know you're not talking about this. This is privileged about intel. Uh, I'm going to mute the mic. Somebody sing a song. I'm convinced that Mirage uh, Mirage has to be a plan for David Ben He has to be on his team PR. Some of that nature. At the very least, the Australian cat, right? You know at the very least, he's yes, swinging yes. from Benavidez's man cheese, man. I'll tell you that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I was like, what's it called? I forgot what I was going to say. It was something about Benavides. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard. it can be hard, man, not to die on your sword, man. Mirage, you've got a lot of nerve calling somebody else a clown. <laughs> you know, I'm fucking. I mean, I don't, listen, I don't listen. Listen, I don't listen. I don't have time for the silliness. Here's what I know. This guy enlisted the aid of Memoeta Dia. If you know anything about boxing and you know who Memoeta Dia is, you know why he's there. But also, if you know anything about boxing, you know exactly who Victor Conti is and you know the Balco scandal. And who's Caleb Plant with? He's with Victor Conti at Snack. And who's David with? He's with Memoeta Dia. So if you want to be childish and still believe in Santa Claus, by all means, knock yourself out. Hey, but I know why they're with those two guys. Hey, not dude. Hey, what's the word nice you using, bro? I need to know. In Muay Thai, the hardest I've ever been hit was by a dude who wore a snack on his trunks. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, because snack, snack, snack is basically just diabolical. No, yeah, no. I'm just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why it's funny, bro. Diabolical. Chill, <laughs> son. I mean, yeah, hold yeah, on, too. Man, like, he gets it. He gets are you it. sure Snack is actually, like, giving out steroids? I think Victor Conti might have turned over a new leaf. Just think about this. Before you guys come on me, think about this. Snack is with Demetrius Andre. That nigga is trash, bro. I'm sorry to tell y'all this. He's been wow. awful. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Hold it's on, not hold. working hold for on, him. Hold on, yeah, yeah, hold on. Let me keep working. it going. Let me keep it going. Watch. You know who I saw in a Snack ad one day? Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia, that motherfucker is terrible. He was awful against Sandor. He made Sandor look like Pernell Whitaker out there. But let me tell you <laughs> what. Let me tell you what. This is this is what go under the radar. A couple of years ago, Jermo Charlo was supposed to fight Willie Monroe. Uh, I think he ended up fighting Matt Vekorobov in his place. Yeah. Willie Monroe got subbed out because he tested positive for pads. Coincidentally, Willie Monroe was with Snack. 
Hey, Carlos Say Dude. says, doesn't Conti work with Vada? What? Like, hold on, bro. This is again. What steroids is that motherfucker taking, bro? Right, so oh look, no! Okay, yeah, so look, to be what clear, like, snack in itself isn't illegal. They have a lot of legitimate. They're a legitimate company with legitimate products. The reason why we use snack, we're just saying because Victor Conti is tied to snack, and him personally has been related to doping cases. Well, That's yeah, that was with the Barry Bonds. He was connected hey, to Barry Bonds. Yeah, just for whole snack. Connected to every motherfucking thing, man. Hey, but yes, there are plenty of athletes who represent and using snack, and, and they're and they're not cheating. Yes. We got does Conti work with Vada, though? Yeah, now he does. Now he does, yeah. Because the thing is that, look, uh, and I'm sure you, you know this country, but for those who don't, they'll just – kind of change the ingredients around on existing performance enhancing drugs to try to make them harder to detect. And it's a constant, you know, th these pads are constantly evolving. So that's why you need like a Victor Conti there to help you update the definitions in the band list and all these different things. But I'm a very cynical person. I don't think anybody ever really goes straight. I don't. I think Victor's still up to something. The same way I think Memo Whatever the is still up. It's already established. We think all yeah, boxes are cheap. It's just a matter of who gets caught. For real. Like, like I, that. And, I and know I, um, I just said something before, but someone put it in the chat and, you know, it, it's proven my point again. Um, what there was, does anyone think Devin Haney would be taken? Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I don't think, but see, this is the thing. For example, oh, wait, rehydration. Never mind. I yeah, forgot. like, for example, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Pavetkin, Pavek, you take the pad. For the issue you have or what you need. Now, Povetkin, he was always a big puncher, so I don't think he would need a pet. I don't think he would need an anabolic steroid. What did he test positive for? Meldonium, a vasodilator. After that, what he tested positive for? Osterin, a vasodilator. Povetkin always had a gas tank issue. So the pads that he took was for that so that he don't fade down the stretch. That's what I say. It opens up your airways so more air gets in and more red blood cells, some bullshit like that, to give you more energy. So the pad is going to be specific to the fighter that if Devin were on something, if I had to guess, mm -hmm. you got to be on some kind of clenbuterol, something like that, for you to keep making 35. Because you can't punch. So I know you ain't on nothing for that. You can't punch. So whatever you want, if you want something, hypothetically, it's got to be a weight cutting agent. It has to be. Well, this was a. I always want to ask some people this question: When Provekin got caught on steroids the night of his fight in Russia, he was supposed to fight Deontay Wilder for the WBC title, and then he wound up fighting nobody because Wilder left the country because he found out he tested positive. Mm -hmm. Who do you think would have won that fight? Because he took, he first won the title. Provekin. I, I was picking Provekin too to win. I'm gonna say that um, it took me a little while to realize it because I didn't think I didn't think about the fight at the time. That damn, how would that fight have looked? And and when I finally thought about it, which I'll say was around 2018, 2019, when I thought about the fight, like how would that fight have played out? Povetkin would have won. Wilder's not keeping him out. He's not gonna keep him at the end of the jab. No way. He's too short. He bends at the waist. He comes in at a slight crouch. He moves side to side to slip the straight punches. And he comes over the top with really, really, really short hooks that you can't counter. If it's not hooks, it's uppercuts. And Wilder don't have no inside game. So my guess, if they would have fought, Wilder would have lost. You don't think that Wilder might have knocked him out if he hit him with that right hand, though? Nah. He, no, he, he, wouldn't, he, he wouldn't have landed it. it. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have landed have, it, bro. I think Povetka would have knocked him out inside eight rounds because Deontay just won that WBC title, and Povetkin was still probably like thirty-five, and he and that only loss was from Klitschko, and he was still yeah, smart. yeah, that's true. That was, at that time, he was much better than he is now. <laughs> He's old. Yeah, now. like you got to think about it that that time Povetkin wasn't over the hill yet, you know, like not really. Like I wouldn't say that he really was. Old. I would say that after AJ knocked him out. That was the downward spiral because he was still very dangerous up until AJ knocked him out. It's after that that you saw the decline. Well, he but, beat, he knocked out Dillian White after the AJ lost. Yeah, but, but that's what I think. But, but remember, he was getting his ass whooped. Like he was getting fucked up before he knocked him out. Like he's getting his ass whooped. So I would say, and I saw a little bit of decline before that in the Michael Hunter fight. I saw in the David Price fight, yo, David Price came close to knocking him out. He sent him into the ropes. So if Povetkin started declining, I would say it was after the AJ fight. 
But in his defense, though, he was getting old as shit. I mean, 36, 37. It's not like he's young. I mean, he's supposed to be declining. Physically. No, yeah, of course, of course. Like, it's all natural. The natural passage of time. But that that 28, well, really not even 2018. That 2016 Pavekin, circa 2015, 2016, was very much still a dangerous fighter. And I if agree. the fight would have happened with Wilder, honestly, looking back, I do think Pavekin would have won. And I hate to say it, as much as Wilder sucks as a boxer now, he has at least had some time to have more rounds. Back then, he only really had a fight against one quote-unquote elite or a better fighter. So he wouldn't even have had the rounds with actually anyone who's decent of a talent. So he's even more likely to lose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like, I don't... Uh, Pavetkin's style is all wrong for Wilder. Just like, like for the same reason I feel that um, if Derek Chisora would have got the Wilder fight when he wanted the Wilder fight, which was before 2015, years before that, I honestly believe, and people might laugh, but no, I think he would have beat him. That style is all wrong for him. A short, stumpy fighter, lower center of gravity, bends at the waist, fights on a swivel, comes over the top with loop and rights. Wilder don't got nothing for that because Wilder's not coordinated. It's yeah. different. It's different. Yeah. See, Wilder knocked out guys. When the guys are level to Wilder, that guy is actually more in danger than Chisora or Pavetkin because Wilder don't got to, he don't got to punch down to hit that guy. He can shoot no. the straight and hit that guy. Wilder, but if Wilder, got, so what do you think about Andy Ruiz? He'd be swinging yeah. on wild and fighting like he drunk in the club or something. Man. Well, the problem with Andy and the problem with Andy, Andy don't swivel like Pavekin swivels. He fights on a swivel. He, he comes in side to side, side to side. And then once he's up on you, he'll come over with a sh The hook is super duper short. It's like a Miguel Cotto hook. It's tight. You can't counter it and you can't really block it because it's so short, so fast. It's going to hit you. Pavekin, I think, would have got him. Chisora, I think, would have got him. If they would have fought when Chisora wanted to fight, which, like I said, that was years ago. That was years and several losses ago. And I firmly believe if Chisora would have got that fight, or for him, he do he do the Joe Frazier shit. Bob Weave, Bob Weave. And then yeah, we'll I was gonna say like he was gonna Muhammad Kawi that motherfucker. That's what I'm saying. Like he Bob Weave, Bob Weave, and then before you know it, there's the overhand right and Wilder. Like, while the stand up right, bro, he don't change levels and move his head and keep it. Nah, no, dog, no. you literally walked into a left hook from Eric Molina, bro. His, literally. His head stays on the center line, man. He don't be moving it. Lit like, lit go any, I invite it, go back and watch. He walked into a left hook, walked into it. So I'm like, if you could walk into a left hook from Molina, yeah, Chisora could catch you with an overhand right. And he hit way harder than Molina. She knocked out Carlos to come. He really knocked out Carlos to come. Not that bullshit from the Joyce fight. Not that bullshit from the AJ fight. When Chisora hit to come, he put him to sleep. If I think if Chisora would have hit Wilder, oh yeah, he put him out. Hey Jules, I got a question for you. How there's a there's a heavyweight that's actually coming up right now with a similar type of style, and in the next I'd say three years, do you think that he'd be beating Wilder? If you're wondering who that heavyweight is by now, what's well, um, well, on? be gone by then, man. Who well, Torres? No, no, no. By the t yeah, I, I'm I'm with country. By the time Torres is ready for world level opponents, Wilder will be retired. Yeah, Wilder's 38 I, now. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think Wilder is is uh, is really a world level opponent for someone like Torres. Nah, I'm gonna be uh, look, look. You there's guys like here's an example. European fighters, and I don't say this like I'm not saying that European fighters are bad. It's just styles make fights. So European fighters like Robert Hellenius, any fighter that doesn't bend at the waist to fight on a swivel, they're in danger. Coincidentally, the European style, the torso doesn't move very much. Their way of managing distance is with their feet. They'll move out of range, but they're not slipping and sliding and rolling all that much. So that any fighter with that style you in danger. If you standing upright, you in danger. Right. But a short fighter, a shorter fighter, man, it doesn't have to be Torres. Any I mean, shorter any shorter fighter whose money punches either the left hook or the looping right, yeah, Wilder's in trouble. Real trouble. Not only that, by the, by, by the time Torres did get there in three years, Wilder would be, what, 41 years old? He ain't going to be fighting then. Yeah, like like the, the reason that Ruiz and the reason that none of that really applies to Ruiz 
is Ruiz don't fight on a swivel. He catch and shoot with the high guard. And the fear is, look, if you catch and shoot, he might punch through the guard or around it and get in here and hit you upside your head. So even though Ruiz is short and he does have a lower center of gravity and he is dangerous on the inside, he has to make it inside. And he don't do the side to side like Povetkin did to get inside safely to start attacking. Because Povetkin, he was a pressure fighter, but he was a very smart pressure fighter. He didn't come forward just throwing bullshit. He'll just stay with you for a while and then explode on you. He'll keep you under pressure because he's going to stay with you. He's going to stay on top of you. But he's not always throwing. He's pressuring you just by being there with you. And he'll stay with you and stay with you and stay. And before you know it, mop. Before you know it, overhand right, mop. Like I'm, still, I'm still iffy on Richard Torres right now until he steps up the competition a little bit. No, I, like him. I like him. I like him. I, like I, like him. Him. I do what you mean. I no, he, mean he's looked he's, good. He's looked good fighting the people he's fighting. He looks very yeah, sporadic yeah. when he's fighting. That's what it is. But he, he does take shots too. Yeah, he needs, to, he needs to step it up a little bit now, you know. Because well, well, really I gotta push back on that because you're the second person to say that the guy's had like five or six fights. What are, this is, exactly is true. what every single boxer has ever done. It doesn't matter if they've been club fighters, if they have been world class, potential world class fighters. Oh, he's only had five or six. Yeah, he's only fought like five or six times, and I, I thought I he had, this, I thought he had a few more than that. I don't no, know, so he's not in the bad. ten yet. So the guys that he should be fighting are are like the painters. And the guys who like run cabs, the guys who are basically, you know, meat and potato. At the at the at the rate he's at, this is exactly how they're supposed to be developing them. Now, if he's pulling the shit, you know, in 15, 16, 17, 18 fights, absolutely these criticisms would be good. But at this point in time, he's fighting these four and six rounders. I don't think he's at six rounds even yet. This is exactly the, the quality opponent he's supposed to fight because you don't want to put this guy where he's putting him in too early and you, and you ruin his confidence. He needs to get at least probably 12, 13 fights, and then you want to put him up against like a Jerry Forrest or someone maybe right below that like, level. Like for me, it's too soon to be critical of what I'm getting from Taras because what's the guy got, four or five fights? No, he's got like maybe five or six, but only a couple. He hasn't fought much. Yeah, but, but that's what I mean, that the guy don't even have 10 fights. Like I'm going to give him 10, 11 fights before I really give him a good long look, but it's all right, right. bro. It's all right. Five and even then, and even then, to be really good, he'd have to hit about twenty, and then he'll be really good. Yeah, because off. yeah, because at around between fifteen and twenty, you know, that's when you know you, you're supposed to be at least stepping it up and, and fighting familiar faces. Around fifteen and twenty, you know, but if you don't fight a familiar face and you're like what 25, 30, all right, bro, you're yeah. being protected, bro. Like but I really, think they have him. I think they have him on the some sort of development plan, like they have Nick Ali Walsh. What they're supposed to do? They're doing exactly what they're no, supposed no, to do. No, 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 no. Like, like, look with Nico. Look, I'm gonna be real. I don't know where they're finding those fucking guys. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> just to give you, just to give you an idea about Torres, he started professionally fighting March of 2020 was his first fight. It's only February of 2023. He's had five fights. This guy is developing exactly as. He yeah, he's to. on schedule. Like, you know what shoot. it is? It's because I'm used because I'm used to seeing a, a top rank push their Olympians faster. Like that's probably what it is to be honest. Which like, I don't Shapur... disagree, but we we can agree five fights ain't shit professionally. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, like, yeah. Look, I, look, I, look, I like the Tor. I'm gonna be real. I like the Torres kid because I see possibilities there, and I'm okay if they take your time with him because the heavyweight division is deep, low key. Forget about Fury. Forget about Wilder. Forget about Joshua. He has to worry about Mahmoudov. He has to worry about Jalilov. He has to worry about Ivan Ditchko. He has to worry about Ituama. He has to worry about fucking Jared Anderson, his own yep, fucking yep. stable mate. He has yep. a lot to worry about. But you know what? I think I, it's a shame he can't make Cruiserweight because I think he'll be a dominant Cruiserweight. I agree with that. Oh, I do agree with that. Yeah, he actually would probably be better suited for Cruiserweight, too. I bet you he could make it, too, because he only comes in at, what, about 212, 215. He's not very I big I for think heavyweight. Should, yo, dog, honestly, I think that kid hit hard, bro. Harder than anybody at Cruiserweight right now. I see that when he hit guys, they be hurt. I think he should just cut that 12, grow the porn stash, keep growing it, <laughs> and get down there and whoop some ass, bro. Oh, I think he said he oh, could have oh. been just decided to be a heavyweight instead. I don't really think he's cut out for heavyweight right now. I don't like how fast he is. I think he would be even better 
at cruiserweight. Those guys can't absorb a punch from that kid, bro. He hit like a fucking truck. I don't think they can absorb a punch from that kid, and he's fucking fast. Like, I know it looks a little bit disorganized now, which I get, but that's because he's still transitioning from that Ami style, all that little activity and all that, to a pro style where you set up your punches and maybe you pace yourself, you take your time because you got more than three rounds to get it done. So, you know, take your time, yo, use your jab a little bit. Get him worrying about the jab a little bit before you before you knock his ass out, you know what I mean? So, you know, on that note, I'm going to go to sleep because fucking old. Yep. Yo, everybody have a good evening. Nice, nice speaking, everybody. Yo, Joe, who, yeah. what's your final score to the Super Bowl? Uh, is the Eagles in there? Yeah, yep. the Eagles. Eagles. In the, in the Going Chiefs. for the Eagles, bro. Hell what's your yeah. final score? That's what I'm talking about. I don't fucking know, bro. I'm not fucking psychic. 31. <laughs> Eagles, 31 baby. Eagles, baby.